Palva. And welcome to Cal Jones Field tonight. It's a big night in El Centro. The Central Spartans play host to the Imperial Tigers, a must-win game for the Tigers in Imperial Valley League play. It's always exciting on homecoming. Second week in a row, we have homecoming. That's right. That's how we had ours last, last week. Great time. Good game. And set to go tonight. And like I said, this is going to be a must-win game for the Tigers if they have any chance at all of winning the Imperial Valley League. They must win tonight against the defending champions. Of the league, and we're on the simulcast tonight. As Chick Hearn used to put it, you remember yeah, on the yeah, Lakers, Lakers. We're on the simulcast tonight as we're on KXO Radio, 12:30 a.m. on your dial. Also on the internet at www.kxoradio.com. The distinguished Ivy League champion Spartans come into the game with a five and two record of the season. The last week's 47 13 El Centro City Championship win over Southwest. All the Tigers shut out Calexico 47 and ugly in celebrating their homecoming. And are three and four. A little misleading there at the five and two and the three and four though. As the four losses for Imperial, a grand total of 20 points. Two touchdowns and two field goals in the four losses. And when you look as we were talking, coming over here and along with Dylan Nichols, we were talking about that, that when you see the common opponents, they're virtually even. Yeah. Tonight's game uh, would look just about the same if you have both teams. Each team lost to unbeaten Heater Ridge of Yuma by one field goal. And both shut out Quesico quite handily. Now, what we did also talk about, though, is in that Gila Ridge loss that Central had, they scored their only touchdown late, late, late in the game. The yeah. Imperial scored 34 against Gila Penn. Nobody has scored that many against Gila Ridge, I should say, Gila. this season. Gila Penn throws them out because we had a guy at work say, Gila Penn. So how long have they been there? I said, well, Gila Penn, Gila Monster have been there a long, long time. But Gila Ridge has only been there for 14 years playing varsity football. So against Gila Ridge, very close to those against Quesico, same thing. As close to those, so it uh, it looks to be an interesting game tonight. We think it's going to be a close one. As we said, it's homecoming. You can hear the great Spartan band in the background as uh, they're getting things going that way. I think they had senior night as well for the players as they announced them earlier this evening. Spartans are two and zero in IBL play. The Tigers entered tonight one and one with this again being a must win game for any shot for the league for the league title for the Imperial Tigers. And we'll take a look at the starting lineups. For both of the teams when our pregame yeah, show continues in just a moment. When it comes to Mexican food, El Rafe and Imperial does it right. From their special quesadillas, serve the way you like it. Deep fried with cheese, and you add the fillings to tacos, burritos, enchiladas, and more. There's daily specials, too. The food is great, and the service is even better. And don't forget to reserve your tamales for the holidays. El Rafe, located at 139 South Imperial Avenue in Imperial. Open Monday through Saturday. Ray at Dermis Floor Covering would like to take this opportunity to say thank you, Imperial Valley, for your patronage. Dermis Floor Covering has been in business since 1978, working hard to satisfy customers with exceptional products and outstanding service. They're doing something right at Dermis Floor Covering, so if you're looking to replace your flooring, stop by Dermis Floor Covering and see the latest styles from the Shaw Floor Gallery, a gallery that will inspire you. Dermis also offers free estimates valley-wide. Stop by 220 North J Street in Imperial. We're here to count to the field in El Centro. The Central Spartans playing host to the Imperial Tigers. And while we have an opportunity to give you the starting lineups, or what we believe will be close to the starting lineups, we'll give that to you. For the Tigers, Jordan Reed will continue at quarterback for Imperial. He's thrown 18 touchdowns against just three interceptions. And it's really, as a junior, it's his first full year of varsity football. Yeah, and he yet, was injured. You can see, very early yeah, and you can see him improving each and every game, so it'll be interesting to see how the six foot five junior does for Imperial tonight. Yeah, running back will be Jesus Padilla. We noticed uh, that Nano Quintero not dressed out tonight with their hurt shoulder, so Padilla will get the call with the running back slot. So with him will be Joey Ramos. Career record in all the receiving stuff for Imperial for touchdown receptions, yards receptions. Reception catches, all of that. You can put him down as the number one in school history. He'll be at the split in position, the tight end. I'm not sure exactly who will be a tight end. Tanner Travis had been starting. He's out and warming up. Uh, so we'll see how that's going to go on that, but we'll let you know when game time comes up. Ryan Bonillas will be at a slot. Jacob Gray will be a slot. And the other we saw was Brenton Adams was starting in the slot position. I suspect he'll be there for Tanner Travis, who's still nursing that right leg, the injury. Along the line, James Folks will be at the left tackle slide, booking order left guard. Center Caleb Rowland, Sebastian Mendoza will be at the right guard, and Luis Amarillas will get the start instead of Guy Bishop at the right tackle position. For 
central run offense, De Niro Usuna, who has thrown for over 6,000 yards in his career, will be at the quarterback slot. I think arguably he's the best quarterback and most experienced quarterback in the Imperial Valley. He'll count on wide receivers Fernando Morales, Isaiah Nava Esparza, and then Carlos Gomez possibly starting in one running back position. But uh, they'll have a different core in there as Jonathan Medina will be at one position in the running back slot. You'll also see Angelo Nava Esparza as the Spartans have come out of the field now while the great Spartan band plays. Now, I know they want to call it on you Spartans, but it's on you Chargers. We don't know how that goes. <laughs> At the in positions on offense for Central, one to me is Michael Sullivan, who goes both ways. Great athlete will be a one in position. Joseph Hargrave, Rick Nuna are the tight tackles. The guards are Chris Kahn and A.J. Ariano. Dominic Celia will be at the center spot. And our defense, James Folks will be in the bits of end along with Maurice Pitney on the other side. Joel Hernandez, Numberto Sanchez in the middle. I did notice, though, that uh, we did have other injuries. I know I haven't been told officially, but you saw some of them. I know Miles is not. Miles Moore is not. Miles, yeah, he's out. Yeah, he's, he's out. out. Uh, Quintero's out. Kai Bishop, we know those three for sure are out. Linebackers, Ethan Ramos. And uh, I think last week we pulled in... Uh, Mendenhall. Daniel oh. Mendenhall came up from the JV. Yeah, but at uh, uh, Brandon Silva was playing some at the at the linebacker oh, position. Okay. Yes, you're right. And uh, we'll be back with more of our pregame show, and we'll look at the defenses in just a moment. Start your day off right with your favorite drink from Brickhouse Coffee next door to Brickhouse Deli at the Lisa Tucker Center in Imperial. Brickhouse Coffee has so many drinks to choose from. Hot drinks, blended drinks, or cold drinks, including the best iced tea in the valley with lots of different flavors. Open daily with a convenient drive through And next door, Brickhouse Deli with big, cold, fresh flavors. The valley's premier deli, serving breakfast and lunch. So come visit them both at the Lisa Tucker Center on West Eaton Road in Imperial. The Imperial Tiger Football Association was started years ago to help the football team with much-needed equipment and sending the players to special training now through their fundraising efforts from the past. And now the Imperial Tiger Association is proud of what they have accomplished and what they will continue to do in the future. They're always looking for new members. You can call Victor at 760 That's 960-6317 if you're interested in helping out. Go Tigers! No matter what you need to keep your home cool and comfortable, RK Air Conditioning has it. From complete 10 star cooling systems to the latest in Wi Fi capable thermostats, we have everything you need to stay comfortable. That's why you should make RK Air Conditioning your first and only call for your cooling needs. Call 760 353 7570 or find us online at rkair.net. Just start. Quality you can feel. And as we turn back here to Cal Jones Field, but El Centro, the defensive backs for the Tigers, Brian Bonillas, Brandon Adams are at the quarterback spots, and then uh, Andrew Luna, Stephen Shaw, and James Ponce, also decent nurse and knee injury, will be in the defensive backs. And defensively for the Spartans, along with Ron Lyon will be Zico Suna, Nathan Santana, Carlos Hernandez, and Joseph Denton, the other defensive in position. Angel Navas Barca, Eric Moreno, and Elias. Domingos will be at the linebacker spot. The defensive backs, Michael Sullivan, as we mentioned before, Eric Garcia, Jonathan Medina, and Angel Ortiz as the great Spartan band came off the field. They always do a bright for homecoming here. They've oh, yeah. seen some really impressive things here. They had an American flag on the field that was 20 yards long. We that that was beautiful. It was beautiful. And they, they are, especially the tuba, you know, being tuba, not to mention that Valley Center, right? I love the tuba. Oh, yeah. They, they, they had four of them here. Yeah. I think Renee Baker still at the uh, at the helm. Took over for Jimmy Cannon, who was here and, and really got this band started up and going super strong. And then Renee kept that going. And, and it's nice to see the band continue with the drill team, the smart teams, and everybody. And so like they do it up well. And the Tigers have now come back onto the field, and they're all white visiting uniforms with the red trim. Red Helm was in Rocky IT on one side, number on the other. For the Spartans, they'll be in blue jerseys tonight with white pants. White numerals and white helmets, or correction, blue helmets with white Spartans on the side as the captains come out onto the field now. And the captains for the Spartans will be Nero Suna, who will be their quarterback. You'll hear a lot about him tonight. Jonathan Medina, Angel Nava, and Michael Sullivan, and the captains for Imperial on the phone.
far side. We have Joey Ramos. Ethan Ramos, another one of the captains. And yeah, let's see. Sebastian. Yeah, Sebastian, Mendoza. right. Sebastian Mendoza is one of the other captains. Captain Lee yeah. with Big Ponis. Yeah, looks like. No, no. No, just a no, James Captain Ponce out there. James Ponce, that's that what it is. Will be the other captain. So they're deciding with the coin toss who will be kicking off and who will be receiving. One game already in the books this weekend, and that's the Brawley High Wildcats defeated Southwest just across town last night by a score of 49-7. to So Brawley 3-0 and in league, and uh, they are atop right now tied with Central, who is 2-0 and in league, Imperial 1-1. and As we mentioned, for any chance for Imperial to win the league or to get a time for the league, they've got to beat the Spartans tonight and then count on the Spartans beating the Wildcats in the Big Bell game at the end of the year. The Spartans won the toss. They will defer, and the toss will take over on offense. They'll defend the West goal right on your dial. Your dial at 12.30 a.m. KXO, El Centro, California. Waiting on this one. Yeah. And we're about ready to kick it off. I'm anticipating this game for a couple of weeks now. I've been looking at some of these kids in for Central. I got to coach about three of them that I can pick up real quick. Eric Garcia. Brian Martin, Matthew Moreno, coach them all in baseball. Oh, wow. Okay. All good athletes. In fact, Brian Wood grew up playing all the youth sports in the Bureau, came over his freshman year. That started coaching here. Brian Sr. Kicking off with the Spartans, the Jose Berlin Torres, 29 touchbacks already this season. Ooh. He can pretty well take it into the end zone if he's how he wants to, so. We'll see how he wants to get this game kicked off. Deep to receive for the Tigers. On the near side will be Ryan Bonilla. It's on the far side, Joey Ramos. Spartans in blue and white. Tigers in all white with red trim. As we get ready to kick this one off, they have a pro volley league play at homecoming night at Cal Jones Field in El Centro. I'm Mickey Dill along with George Grahal to sit back and enjoy Friday night football here in the Imperial Valley. And we're ready. We're shaking up here already. The, the grandstands are shaking, yeah, too. That's the end of this one already. And the kickoff, a line drive kickoff. Then Ryan Bonius will go over, and it bounces off and makes it up at the five-yard line. Finds a little bit of a crease at the 15, and it'll be brought down right near the 15-yard line. It's one of those I think he didn't really want to get, but it sort of bounced toward him, so he had to get that. Oh, he was... He was hit by a host of Spartans, set up by Manny Romero. First one to make contact. Just shy of the 15 yard line, so the Tigers have the ball first and 10 at their own 14. And Jordan Reed at quarterback for the Tigers. He's completed 102 of 179 passes for 1,333 yards, 18 touchdowns, and three interceptions. Wow. And he'll have three wide receivers going to the left side of the field, one to the right. And Padilla. We'll get the call up the middle. The Dia will go off left tackle. He'll get across the 15-yard line. And then the Spartans think he may have fumbled the ball. And it is. Spartans will recover the fumble. Not sure who was it came up with the ball, but the Dia fumbles it. And the Tigers, with their backs to the wall, have fumbled the ball at the 13-yard line. And it's first and 10 central. Uh, keep doing that to ourselves. We can't do that. You are right. It's happened. No, they held him up. First guy hit him and held him up, and then the other guy started trying to strip the ball. And they did it. They accomplished it. Too many times this year, though, the Tigers have given up stuff early. The arrow, the sooner goes back to pass. He's going to complete the pass at about the 15-yard line. And it'll be Michael Sullivan. It'll actually be at about the 11-yard line, so a gain of a couple. It'll be a second down now and eight from the eleven. Andrew Luna making the tackle for the Tigers. Both teams no battle offenses. And it will hand it up up the middle, and it's a brick wall. The ball carrier is Jonathan Medina, and he'll get virtually no gain. And I'll give him a yard at the 10-yard line, so it'll be a third down and seven from the 10. Yeah. Omar Garibaldi and Ethan Ramos combined for the tackle for the Tigers. 
seven. Third, third down and seven. Back to pass Osuna. Looks out to the left side. Got to complete the pass at the 12-yard line. Gets tackled immediately as coming up youth and Ramos comes up with a great tackle. Got to the 10-yard line. No gain. Fourth down and seven at the 10. If the Tigers only give up a few goal out of this, I think it's a victory in itself. Yes, you see how quick he's been close on that? Yes. From the linebacker, middle linebacker's position out to the left flat. Good coverage. This is a little bit of an angle here. It's going to be set up to be a 28-yard field goal attempt. Jose Berlin Torres. 15 of 16 on extra points. There's a bit more than that, and there is an angle. Got plenty of leg to it, and it is good. good. So with 10.07 remaining in this first quarter of play, it's the Spartans 3 and the Tigers 0. Day in and day out, your publicly owned Imperial Irrigation District proudly delivers low-cost, reliable energy service to its customers in the Imperial and Coachella Valley. When compared to other power providers, IID's residential, commercial, and governmental customers all save up to 50% on their monthly energy bills. That's because IID is committed to more than just delivering power. IID is committed to you. IID, where customers always come first. Scoring drive for the Spartans, they take advantage of a fumble by the Tigers on their first snap of the game, but the Tiger defense holds them to just three yards on that first drive. It lasted 57 seconds and capped by 28 yard field goal by Jose Berlin Torres, and it's 3 to 0 in favor of the Central Spartans. So, in the first minute and 15 seconds of the game, they're kicking off for the second time. Look at that. They're going to kick it away from Ramos, and Ryan Bonillas will get it at the two yard line. Straight up the field of the 10, the 15 to the 20. Good luck. Back to the outside, has a room to run the 35 to the 30. And a possibly touchdown saving tackle at the 43 yard line. The Tigers have great field position, first and 10, near the 43 yard line. Yeah, well, Jose Berlin Torres ended up making the stop. If not, he's gone. Ryan had a clear pass until he came out. I can't believe he ran him down. So it's first and 10. Tigers have put the ball at the 43 yard line. And Central jumps outside before the snap of the ball. Looks to be an offside. Yeah. I don't think Imperial moved in. It doesn't look like they did. There will be a five-yard penalty going against the Spartans. So they get a first down and five and put it out to the 48-yard line. Good run back by Ryan. I don't think he got touched until the kicker for Central brought him down. First and five at the 48. And now they go for Seastry against Imperial, so move it back five yards and make it a first and ten. Back at the 43. You know, I think the opening game jitters will be gone by now, but each team with penalties. There are pops right now. That's what Dylan and I were just talking about. We were excited. I think we're more excited than the players. Back to pass Jordan Reed. going to throw it. That's why Bonillas open, but the pass was thrown before Bonillas was making his cut. Ball's incomplete. Second down at 10 to 43. You think that was a part of the jitters there? That was part of the jitters, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I'm sure he threw that a little sooner than he wanted to. He hadn't even made his, made his cut yet. His sister Kyla and mom and dad listening in from Twin Falls, Idaho. Hey. 51, 51 degrees. Mom and dad are up there? Yeah, they're up oh. there, and uh, I'll be flying up there in the morning. Back to pass is Reed. Got a complete Five, the pass. Like Jacob Gray catches the ball, gets a couple of blocks, gets across the 50-yard line, in the Central Spartan territory to the 49, that'll be a gain of eight yards, a third down and two coming up for Imperial. Good blocking by Britton Adams and Brian Bonillas. Jacob Gray, he's really been coming on. 20 receptions, 163 yards, two touchdowns. This 21st take the handoff, goes back. Going to get Gray on the other side, complete it. Good cut. And it will get a first down to the 41-yard line, gain of eight yards on the play. And the Tigers have a first and ten. Jacob Gray with the catch on that. Good job by Jacob. Got the ball. Right when the defender was going to hit him, the first defender took a step back to avoid the tackle. 
good play action fake on the yeah. fake hand off the Padilla up the middle too, kind of throws the defense a little bit. Both me, I was watching Padilla. First and ten from the 41 of the Spartans. Tigers with the football. Can add up this time to Padilla. Padilla on the right side has some room to run. Tripped up at the 35, dives forward to near the first down. We'll see where they're going to mark the ball at. You look at the first down at the 34. First and ten Tigers. After a gain of seven. Good. For making the right tackle there. Nice tackle by Angel Ortiz for the Spartans. And hand off again to Padilla. No. Should have done that that time. Should have kept it. There was nobody on this side of Jacob would have kept that one, but instead Padilla to get tackled for a loss back to the 35 yard line. That was a bad read by Jordan. He said he can run right around the right tackle. That run Padilla a moment ago though was for 12 yards. Okay. Mistake on that of mine. And that's going to be a loss of six. So it'll be a second down and 16 from the 35 and back to Bass Reed. And it complete the pass to Joey Ramos gets away from one tackle, can't get away from the second and third. Be brought down around the 33 yard line. It'll be a gain to just a couple. Mark it at the 32, gain of three, so a third down now and 13 for Imperial. Get a number on that Spartan, I brought him down. 61. Leave it easily. First tackle of the night for the Spartans. Back to passes, Reeves. Going to throw it over the middle, incomplete. Oh, double, triple coverage in the middle, yeah. He'll let by, sir. Oh, yeah, the coach is letting him know, too. Everybody else is one on one. He throws into triple coverage. He's got to calm himself down. Yeah. To yeah. look at those check off reads. He's got to read, make his reads. And the Luna coming in for Padilla. Fourth and 13 at the 32. And the Tigers will empty the backfield. Four wide okay. receivers to the right side, one to the left, and that's Ramos. Reed looks over the defense. There's only three defenders on this side. Fourth and 13 from the 32, back to pass. Has some protection. Looks over Joey. to the side, got it completed to Joey Ramos. Third First down. down, inside the 20-yard line to about the 16. Actually, they're making it a lot closer than what I thought it was. They can see the sideline over there. Yeah. Or maybe the, man, but it's going to be a, a first down. They're going to put it at the 19 yard line on that. So first and 10 Tigers at the 19 after a 13 yard gain to Ramos. Also pretty fast. Now that one's pretty. Back to pass on the play action fake. Oh, way over the head of the intended receiver, Ryan Bonillas at the 17 yard line incomplete. Be a second down and 10. Yeah, I'd like to do, for them to do that for white right and keep Joey by himself one on one over there. Yeah, I agree. They isolate him. Isolate him. They have to. Second down and ten from the nineteen. Read back the pass. Should have a swing pass out to Bonilla search of Jacob Playfall is incomplete. And it'll be a third down and ten from the nineteen. Yeah, well, we gotta get Jordan calm down. That was thrown behind him. He's had time back there. No, he's, had, he's, he's hurrying that. Jacob, he threw it behind him. Jake could have had to do it 180 to get to that to left hand on it. Four down territory. So third down at 10 at the 19. So we get at least half of it here. Back to pass is Reed. It's a heavy pressure. Rolls away to his left. Looks downfield. Going to pass it into the end zone or near the end zone. Falls incomplete. Intended for Joey Ramos at the four yard line. Went out of bounds. Fourth down and 10 coming up at the 19. Three incompletions in a row for the Tigers on this drive. And the Tigers look like they're going to try to tie this up. Ball will be placed at the 27 yard line. So a 37 yard attempt coming up. Edgar Robles will do the honors. Kicking from the left to the right to the east. The ball is up. It's not going to be straight enough. It's going to go wide, no, wide, right, all right. incomplete. And the Spartans deep edge holds out. The Tigers had a first and ten. Following the kickoff at the 43. And hold. And the Spartans have the three to zero lead with 7.35 to go in the first half of play. 
thing I just picked up on going. They sent four wide receivers out this way. They only had three defenders. The white the safety took off with Brent Adams and Ryan Bonilla all by himself right here at the ten yard line. Maybe they'll we'll see, see that. that. Yeah. As soon as it goes back to pass, it will swing pass out to the side. Jonathan. Yeah, it was, first of all, it might have been a backwards pass, but Medina picks up the ball and they said it was a forward pass, but it was incomplete. It'll be a second down now and 10. Just above his reach. You can start to put your hand, hands up with those shoulder pads. Put the right where you couldn't get it with either hand. And off of over right tackle, the Tigers are going to smother him immediately. Nice. And that's once again Jonathan Medina, and it's going to be a loss of a yard on the play. So third down and nine from the 18. Beautiful penetration by Maurice Padilla. His first tackle of the night. Either team with huddles, so they're going right back at it. As soon as back to pass, pass is completed. He breaks one tackle, going to die toward the first down line. He's not going to get it. The pass is going to be completed. Out to the 28-yard line is where they're saying it at is at. And it's going to be completed to Fernando Morales. Joey Ramos, Nathan Ramos in on the tackle. I think Sergio Serrano in there for the first time. Right. And I thought he might get a start out of it, but I don't think he, he no, they had started, but they brought him in. Even so. Shaw. Yeah. Even Shaw came out. So, Spartans will have to find. Deep to receive for the Tigers. Ryan Bonitas on the near side. And Joey Ramos on the far side. Oh, thank you. Hunt's going to go to Ramos. Gets the third catch at the 42-yard line. And the Tigers will have the ball first and 10 at the 42. If you're just joining us, 3-0 Central leading the ball game. Halfway through the first quarter of play. And the Tigers have the ball first and 10 at their own 42. Yeah, we've got to stand up to look at the clock. <laughs> Whether it's at Central or Southwest, you have to stand up to look at the clock. If you're in the press box. And I have been to the gym in yeah. how many years? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dad's name is Jim, but that's the only Jim I know. Right now, so. <laughs> that's, that's the way I would spell it. Too. First and ten for the Tigers from the 42-yard line. Jordan Reed from the shotgun formation. Takes the handoff. Passes it. Going to be tipped away by Michael Sullivan. Good job defensively for the Spartans. It'll be a second down and ten. Ooh, that was dangerous. A little dangerous there. Yeah, that was tipped up in the air where that yeah. got him picked off. That's four straight incompletions for Jordan Reed after he had thrown four of five on a drive. The D will move to the right side of Reed. Now moves up over to the left side. Brenton Adams to the near side. Man to man defense. You can take advantage of that. Back to pass is Reed. Throws it over the middle. Finds Joey Ramos. Gets the first down to the 45 nice. of Central. To the 40, to the 35. And we run down from behind at the 34 yard line. But I tell the big game for the Tigers in the first and 10 in Central Territory. Oh, Matthew Moreno ran him down. 24 yarder on that pass play. Beautiful, beautiful shoot there by uh, Ramos. Get on the first it's almost like he was almost waiting to get some blockers, too, when he was brought down from behind. First and 10, Tigers to the central, 34. Back to pass is Reed. Sets up. Oh, throws ooh, way behind the intended receiver. Joey Ramos at the 20-yard line, incomplete. It'll be a second down and 10. Yeah, that's on top of Ramos and hit the 50. 27. Angel Ortiz, and that, that should have been picked off. Lucky that it wasn't. No. Apparently, because it's still very wide. Yeah. D to the left side of Reed, who stays in the shotgun. Three wide receivers to the left, one to the right. Handed out to Padilla. Padilla over right tackle. Pulls with Spartan inside the 25-yard line to the 24. He's near the first down. Mm-hmm. Close to that. He is a tough ball. Oh, he's I'll tell you what, he's impressed me this year. We're going to see he's very close to the first down. I'm not sure if they're going to stop the clock and bring out the chains. No, but he's going to be first down for the Tigers on a 10-yard gain by Jesus Padilla. 
that David O'Keefe had a hold of him, the linebacker, and he carried him for three or four yards. 16 yards on four carries for Jesus, and it's the first and 10 Tigers at the Spartan 23-yard line. Long snap count, trying to draw the Spartans off sides. Brady takes the snap, makes the handoff, goes over the middle to Ramos. Ramos is going to get inside the 15-yard line to the 14. That'll be a gain of nine yards on the play, second down and one coming up. Michael Sullivan is per tackle of the night for the Spartans. That's the man to watch, I think, on the defensive side for the Spartans. And about the Padilla. Padilla will try to get the first down. Looks like he has it from here. Down to about the 13-yard line. It'll be a first and 10 Tigers at the 13. Let's make it the 12. Give him a gain of two. Big collision there at the middle with Nathan Matana. Our tough yards for Padilla. Tough, Padilla, the boy, he is really carrying the mail on this one. He's carried for 13 yards on this drive. First and ten Tigers from the Spartan 12. Somebody's moving. And some movement on the defensive side. Let's see, nope, on the Tiger side, somebody was moving. That drew the Spartans offside, so that five yard penalty, you ain't seeing that. Oh. Get down, you got your momentum going now. It's the first and 15 to bring it back to the 17 yard line. That's all they're doing. They got a close rise till the snap. 78 is the one that jumped. Three to the shotgun. It's the snap. Takes the handoff, throws it over the middle, oh, has a receiver, and it was in his hands. Ryan Bonitas couldn't hold on to it. Ball is incomplete, and it will be a third, second down now in 15. I think he was running before he got the ball because it was right on the money. Well, I think, I think you thought it was going to hit the Benny Carter, the referee, because it went right by his ear. It looked like Ryan Flint. Take the hand off, going to throw it out into the flat, oh. and bounces out of the hands of Jacob Gray. It'll fall incomplete. So it'll be now a second down, third. They get a third down and 15 from the 17. Now we got Brendan Adams coming in for Jesus to be at the running back decision for the Tigers. Too many times do you see that, though, on a drive, that you have all your momentum going and then a penalty, and especially a legal procedure penalty. Now a little... No. Oh, nice. has to come out from the backfield. He's going to try running and turning the corner. We'll get to the 10 yard line down to near the 5. He's going to be close to a first down. We're going to have to see where they move his, his forward progress along the near sidelines. They have to change on the far sideline. Looks like the rest might be at the net 5 yard line over there. Yeah, they're going to say he went out of bounds at the 5, so that'll be a gain of 12. But a fourth down and three coming up. And the Tigers have to decide what to do. Do you go for it? Or do you go for the field goal? They're going to go for it. See if we can outside. Nice run by Jordan Reed. His longest run of the year. Two hundred yards. No quarterback. A lot of noise coming out from here now on the central side. Fan out to Brenton Adams. Brenton Adams around the left side, and he's not going to make it. Nope. So he just stacked that back up, and he was not able to move anywhere. And it should be a loss on the play. And the Spartans defense holds the Tigers once again in the red zone. What a stop for the Spartans. And he had three blockers ahead of him. Stopped him at the six-yard line, so a loss of a yard on that one. I didn't get to see the number on that. Yeah, he got all stacked up. There a lot of blue jerseys on that one. Four minutes to go in this first quarter. I, oh, the third Tigers. Toronto. Tigers are going to bottle this one up completely on the hand I left the middle. And Toronto will lead the Tiger tacklers to bring down the ball carrier. He did such a wonderful job last weekend. In his first game back in almost a year and a half. I'm sure if that was Elias Dominguez who got that, number three. Could you see who carried that? Oh, was it 7? I thought it was 7. Was it quarterback that carried it? No, no, he had it or not. Okay, You're right. Who's in there now, then? It's hard to see. I get a lot the of water gets the call again over the left side. Breaks through, and then the Tigers will spottle him up. He'll get out to about the 10-yard line. And it's going to be Jonathan Medina. Gain of three on that one. But a third down, now, and seven coming up. Beautiful hit 
by James Ponce. We'll move up the nine yard line. Got to hold him here and get some good decision on after the punt. Ooh, I don't know. And the interception, and the Tigers will get the touchdown. He threw that a little too hard for as close as he was. Yeah, he just he hit him right on the chest. He didn't even know he had it yet. It's like it's stuck to. But you didn't hesitate to go forward to get to the end zone, though, did he? That's <laughs> Second interception of the season by Ethan Rollins. This goes for a touchdown, and the Tigers take the lead for the first time in the game, six to three. What a bounce! Yeah, he threw that a little. Over. That, that wasn't the halfback ball no, there. Yeah, no, no touch on that at all. Yeah. Edgar Robles will come in for the extra point attempt. Ryan Bonillas on the hold. Low snap, but the kick is up. It is good. With 2.43 to go in the first quarter play, it's the Tigers 7 and the Spartans 3. Start the day off right by having breakfast at Broken Yolk Cafe. Once again, voted best breakfast in the Imperial Valley by our customers. Thank you. Remember, Broken Yolk strives every day to bring you great service and great food. Still preparing everything fresh daily. Open for breakfast and lunch seven days a week from 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. Log on to Broken Yolk Cafe and join the club or order your meal online. Broken Yolk Cafe on North Imperial Avenue in El Centro. 10-yard interception return by Ethan Rowles and the extra point by Edgar Robles and the Tigers lead the Spartans 7-3 to with 2.43 to go in the first quarter play. Yeah, I think Ethan had a rock around his chest because it's just stuck there. He didn't even have to put his hands on it yet. So the Tigers will kick off for the first time in the game. Isayo Velasquez will kick off. And he has eight touchbacks to his credit this season. Left-footed kicker. Robles, a right-footed kicker, kicks six for points. It's going to be a high, long one. We'll go back to about the 10-yard line and brought out from there out to the 20, hit at the 25, hit hard at the 23-yard line before he gets to the 25. Wow. That was a collision. What a hit. That was Manuel Pitones hit him as soon as he cut to the left. Some of that he was blindsided, he didn't even see it. So Central the ball first and 10 of their own 24 yard line, now trailing 7 to 3 in the ball game to the Tigers. See, we've got Serrano out here. Osuna goes back to pass. Old swing pass to the near side. Can it complete it? Oh, they yeah. try to pick up a block. The Tigers converge on him to get out to about the 25 yard line as Jonathan Medina. Be a short little gain to the 25. Gain of a yard. Second down and nine. Good pursuit by the Tigers. And that was Sergio Serrano. He stayed right with him. That knee's hold. Doing pretty good. Way to get out there. Well, soon as only had 11 yards of completions, four of six with the interception. Back to pass as soon again. Get a completed oh, nice little pass that's going to be completed after the 40 yard line. Takes a couple of tackles and gets out to the 40, and it's going to be caught. And that's the first reception that he has had in this season. We don't have a number on him. I'm not sure who the ball player is. We're still on to see if we can find out who number seven is who completed that. But it's going to be after the 43 yard line. And that's a gain of back to pass as soon again. Over complete overthrows his receivers fall incomplete. I don't even know who he's throwing at. And completion was I don't know 18 yards on the previous play. This one goes incomplete. And it's a second down and 10 from the 43. I guess that was his designed rollout because he. Rolled up to his right, but there's no, no Tigers around. He hurried back. Second down and 10, back to pass. Pump fake. Now going to complete the ball out to the 28-yard oh, nice. line. To makes a couple of moves. Going to dive forward. Tiger territory. It's the same player again. We're going to try to find his name on him. Dylan's going to get that for us. It'll go to the 42-yard line of the Tigers. It's a first and 10 for the Spartans. 15-yard gain on this one. Just quick snap. That's all he's doing. The boy in the tackles. 
right between the safety and the linebackers behind the linebackers. And just a little slant. Two wide receivers each side of the field, as soon as back to pass. Throws it completes to the near sideline of the 39-yard line. Going to be driven down to the 35 out of bounds. Marcus Moore. Marcus Moore. We saw him last year with the period as a freshman. So that's who it is. Okay. Kind of looked familiar, didn't it? Ah, well, he's real quick. Yes, he is. Remember last year in flight as a freshman? Here we go again. Back to pass soon again. Looks downfield, going to throw deep, almost intercepted. In fact, if it wouldn't have been tipped by the Spartan receiver, it would have been intercepted. But, it would have, yeah. but Skyler Cook, a freshman, tried to bring it down, was not able to, and it's tipped away, and it falls incomplete. It'll be a second down and 10 from the 42. Make it, no, I'm sorry, a third down and three from the 35. The field was just brought it up. Number 12 was wide open all by himself. Quarterback never looked that way. Got the blown coverage. By the Tigers. We gotta correct that. We'll do this. And tighten everybody up. Hand it off out of the left side to Angel as far as a not as far as a he may have the first down of the thirty two. He needed three yards and his right at three yards, so we'll see it just depends on where they're gonna put the football down at. And it's gonna be at the thirty two. But they haven't made any motion uh, of whether it's a first down or not. Tiger coach Kerry Laguerre is standing out on the field and saying he didn't make it, but it's going to be a timeout on the field. With yep. five, we have 57 seconds remaining in this first quarter play. It's the Tigers seven and the Spartans zero. I don't worry anymore about getting stranded with my car breaking down. Why is that? That automotive class I took at Imperial Valley College not only prepared me to fix my own car, it also prepared me for a new career in automotive repair. I like the way you speak. I've always wanted to become a welder. Then check out these and other IVC career education classes at imperial.edu. We missed the play. 57. We did it. I think we just missed the play. <laughs> Making my notes. They gave him a first down now. Second. Yeah, we got the first down now. Oh. Second down. So, yeah, six-yard gain. Oh, I'm sorry. I missed We're going to get that to um, well, that's Medina the right. as a run. And he handed it to Medina again around the right oh, side. Medina's not break open. That's it. He's gone. Touchdown. He was already touched at all the line of scrimmage. And it's down the little team. And then went the distance for the touchdown. It's going to be a 26-yard run by Jonathan Medina, his sixth touchdown of the year, and the Spartans are back on top by a score of nine to seven. Yeah, right off, right tackle, never got touched. Oh, you make those old man sounds here. Yeah, <laughs> that extra, hurts. extra point is good, and with eight seconds remaining. In this first quarter of play, it's out of Spartans 10, the Tigers 7. For over 60 years, the Imperial Quarterback Club has helped different clubs and sports teams at Imperial High School. The money they raise goes a long way, keeping your kids busy with school activities. Their members are parents and community people who care and want to donate their time. If you would like to become a member, please contact Betty or Larry at 760-355-1312. That's 355-1312. The Quarterback Club wishes the Imperial Tigers a great season. Go Tigers! Drive for the Spartans, nine plays, and they will go 76 yards on the drive that will use two minutes and 22 seconds off the clock. Yeah, by the 26-yard touchdown run is sixth of the year by Jonathan Medina, and with Berlin Torres' extra point, it's now a 10-7 to central lead. Eight seconds remaining in this first quarter. Berlin kicking off for the third time in the game. But only leaving it by three. Oh, good kick. Long kick. But he will get it to three. Out to the 15. Breaks one tackle at the 15 yard line. They hit a lot of blue jerseys. Gets hit hard, brought down hard at the 18 yard line. And that's where the Tigers will take over, first and 10. And they'll be at their own 18 yard line. With just one second remaining on the clock. Give that. Tackle to Skyler Cook with his first of the tackle. Just a freshman, too. 
And the football at the 18-yard line, first and 10 for the Tigers. One play remaining here in this first quarter. Tigers sent three wide receivers to the right side, one to the left. He's used the D of the lone running back. Will be to the right side of Reed in the shotgun. Goes back to pass. Sets up. Puts out in the flat. Almost intercepted. Almost intercepted at the 20-yard line. Goes through the hands of Michael Sullivan. Yeah, Sullivan. And that'll be the end of the first quarter of play with the score. The Central Spartans 10, the Imperial Tigers 7. Aiden Express and Imperial is your one-stop convenience store with full-service car wash, gas, and diesel. It's a place for all your snack, cold drinks, and ice cold beer. And if you're throwing a party, keg, wine, and champagne. Everything you need at one convenient location. While you're there, get your vehicle washed and save the bus with eight gallons of gas or diesel. And get the 10th car wash drink. Yes, Aiden Express is your one-stop convenience store at the corner of Highway 86 and Aiden Road in Imperial. When it comes to Mexican food, El Zarape in Imperial does it right. From their special quesadillas, serve the way you like it. Deep fried with cheese, and you add the fillings to tacos, burritos, enchiladas, and more. There's daily specials, too. The food is great, and the service is even better. And don't forget to reserve your tamales for the holidays. El Zarape, located at 139 South Imperial Avenue in Imperial. Open Monday through Saturday. Coming up second quarter of play, the Tigers going right to left from the east to the west here at Cal Jones Field in El Centro. You're listening to the action on KXO Radio, El Centro, California. 12.30 on your AM dial and on the internet at kxoradio.com. Second down and 10 Tigers from their own 18-yard line. Reed hands it off to Padilla at the middle. Padilla gets jacked around, fumbles, fumbles. Oh, yes. Harden's going to recover. We haven't seen that from him all year. And twice now in this game, Brian Martin will recover Martin. it. And it will be at the 24-yard line. And the Spartans have all first and 10 at the 24. Ooh, that hurts. That hurts. And no keep that today. Second fumble of the game for Padilla, who had been doing real well. Yeah, after his first fumble well, at 18 yards in the game. First and 10, back to back by the receiver. Touchdown, just like that. Very quickly, Osuna finds Marcus Moore for the 24-yard touchdown. And the Spartans are now up 16-3. to Took advantage of that mistake. Beautiful pass. Beautiful pass. Still the blow coverage there. They're playing at each other. Just a post pattern over the middle. Okay. Of it. Just right on the money. Yeah, I don't know about Sergio being able to stay with him. Speaking of Serrano, extra point is good. And the score with 11.49 to go in this first half is now the Central Spartans. Got to move things around here. Central Spartans 17 and the Imperial Tigers 7. Ray at Dermot's Floor Covering would like to take this opportunity to say thank you, Imperial Valley, for your patronage. Dermot's Floor Covering has been in business since 1978, working hard to satisfy customers with exceptional products and outstanding service. They're doing something right at Dermot's Floor Covering, so if you're looking to replace your flooring, stop by Dermot's. Valley wide, stop by 220 North J Street in Imperial. One play right after the fumble recovery by Martin, and it's a 24-yard touchdown pass from Nero Zuna to Marcus Moore. And with the extra point, all of a sudden, a 7-3 imperial lead has turned into a 17-7 central advantage here at the start of the second quarter play. Nice, huh? Nice, kick. We'll go into the end zone. It'll be a touchback. Beautiful kick. Be his 30th touchback of the year. So the first two touchdowns, have, or the first two scores will come after Tiger fumbles. He just can't do that against good teams. We can oh, this is. first half. We keep doing that to ourselves so all year long. We've been doing that first half. We just don't know what team's going to show up. Okay, we'll so I got a little roll, 17 to 7, still a lot of football left. We'll have the ball first and 10 at their own 20 yard line. Empty the backfield, Reed in the shotgun. 
Two wide left, three wide right, back to pass. That's up in the pocket. Gets hit from behind, and the ball bounces onto the ground. It's incomplete. I think you're just saying complete. It's going to go forward, it look like, and it will go incomplete. It'll be a second down now and ten. I need some blocking up front. Central like circling waters right now. After yeah. Taking advantage of two fumbles by Imperial. One was the first snap of the game for Imperial. They bumble it away, but the defense held Central to a field goal. But this time, the Spartans turn a fumble over into a touchdown. The very next play at 17-7. Back to pass is Reed. Sets up in the pocket. Has to roll out. He got a little pressure. And a dump it off. Going to complete it to Brandon Adams at the 24-yard line after the 30. There's a couple of tackles to get to the 34-yard line. A gain of 14 and a first down for Imperial. Good job, Brendan Adams. Yes. He avoided the tackle and then did a loop around the left side, got the first down. That'll be his first catch of the nine. That goes for 14 yards. Yeah, Angel Ortiz finally brought him down. First and 10 Tigers at their own 34 yard line. Tigers are going to stack three wide receivers on the left did. side that are two behind the front one. Never yeah, seen it work yet. Yeah, back to pass. Is Reed sets up in the pocket, looks over the middle, going to find a receiver, completed the 44-yard line, and then going to be stopped and brought down. The ball goes loose, but I believe his well, they call the rest is already stopped at the 44-yard line. Looks like enough yardage for the first down for Imperial. Be real close. They're standing them up and then stripping the ball. That's all they're doing. Yeah, it's going to be a first down. It's a gain of 10 yards out to the 44. Another first down for the Tigers. 10-yard reception by Jacob Gray. His third catch of the night. Tigers stack up the left side again and back to pass is Reed. Going to pass it to the other side. Going to complete it to Brenton Adams, and he'll dive forward to get a yard out of it, nothing more. Good job of maintaining their composure on defense for Central. Yeah, that was Joseph Penn. Good read. Excuse me. Just a yard gain on that. Second down and nine from the 45. Brenton Adams. First reception of the game. The brothers get receptions on this drive. Reed, back to pass. Sets up in the pocket. Looks semi-deep. Intercepted at the 40-yard line. The two receivers in the area, Ramos and Bonillas, and it's going to be intercepted by Isaiah Navas Barza. And that is his second interception of the season. And the Spartans have great field position at their own 47-yard line, first and 10. You had two and three receivers right next to each other, three defenders. Third turnover of the game by the Tigers, two fumbles and now an interception. And it's first and 10 central, back to Paso Suna. Tries to get away, he's not going to get it. He's Ethan Ramos going to sack him way back at the 35-yard line. Big sack by Ethan Ramos. Ooh. Loss of 12. He got hit hard, too. Look at Ethan with five tackles already. Tanner Travis came in just belting him. He was fighting with Ethan. Ethan was trying to take him down. He was fighting for more yardage. And Tanner just hit him hard. First sack of the game for the Tigers. So as soon as it goes back to pass, that's up. Finds a receiver over the middle, fumbled it, and drops it. Not able to hold on to it is the intended receiver, Fernando Morales, that falls incomplete. Third down at 22 from the 35. Hey, there's another another one that tried to leave or take off right before he had the ball. That stops a string of five straight completions by Osuna, and one including a touchdown. Back to pass, a third and long. And throw it to the near side to Sullivan. Complete at the 35-yard line. Tries to pick up some blocks. Penalty flag goes down. A man, big hit. To knock that down to the well, 44. Tanner. Tanner Travis. Man, he put a load on the 34. Or 44-yard line. But a penalty flag is back at the 37. Oh, I didn't see the flag. Maybe a hold against Central. That'll be declined. It is a hold against Central. Declined. It'll be a fourth down and long. Lead it up to the 44, so give him a gain of nine on it. But with a fourth down and 13, Central out the punt. Boy, that was a hit. Oh, he hit him hard. Wow. Good to see Tanner back, though. 
Good hit. Eagle hit. Turn his got his helmet all the way. Hit him with the shoulder. Sullivan, that's his first catch since the beginning of the game, but he has three on the night. Ooh. Well, then Torres will be punting. There's no pressure at all. And we'll kick a long one. It's going to be bobbed by Ryan Bonis, yes. but he was interfered. Yes. There was interference by a Spartan player, but no call. Well, he was reaching. The ref was reaching for the flag. Right. Ryan was able to cover it at the 27, and that's where Imperial will have the ball first to 10 to throw 27. Now, Imperial needs to get something going. I'm going to ask Dylan, do you bump him? I... No. No, he just came up. He didn't get bumped. The mirror looked like he was bumped. Too much the... room to catch it, that's for yeah. sure. First and ten Tigers from road 27 yard line, trailing the Spartans 17 to 7 with 9.25 to go in the first half here in El Centro at Cal Jones Field. Hey, we got stuff these. Brandon Adams. Gets the call up the middle, breaks a couple of tackles to land a scrimmage. We get across the 25 yard line to about the 27. So they'll get maybe a yard out of it. Be a second down to nine. They'll put it at the 28. David Aguirre with the Spartans with his third tackle of the night. Was able to bring Brenton, or Brendan. And that, you know, with the guys, I don't, I don't know that they're brothers. Brandon and Brandon. Yeah. I believe they are. Back to pass Reed. And it completed to Joey Ramos. Or to, looks like, uh, Brandon Adams. He's going to catch it. He will get out across the 35 to about the 36. So it'll be a gain of eight. So a third down and a yard coming up. Oh, so third down and one for the Tigers. Big third down coming up. I'll let's do it right now. They has to. Because I believe Adams is related to the Mings somehow. Brandon first Adams down, first down. Up the middle. He's going to get the first down about the 37. And the Tigers will get the first down on the gain of a yard. It's a new set of six for the Tigers. First 10 from the 37. Got about 8.15 left in second quarter. Central 17. Imperial 7. Tigers are on the move. First and 10. Throw on 37 yard line. Brandon Adams stays in the backfield. Two wide receivers each side of the field. Reed stays in the shotgun, which he will 99.9% of the time goes back to pass. Sets up. Goes on the far side. Going to find, once again, Brenton Adams on the far side. And he'll get out of bounds. Knocked out of bounds at the 43 yard line. That'll be good for a gain of 6. It'll be a second down and 4. To go by it. Finally pushed him out of bounds. Tigers have thrown 21 passes already in this ball game. Wow. 14 of those in the first quarter. We sure are missing Quintero, though. Yes. The running back position. Oh, yeah. oh, it's up to him back yes. there. He's so fast and strong. Two wide receivers go to the right side this time. One wide left. Back to pass is Reed. Under heavy pressure. Going to go deep. That's the receiver open. Adams is going to catch the ball. At the 20, no, he drops it. It looked like he was right in his hand. And he dropped the ball at the 20, incomplete. Heavy coverage, but the ball was there. Oh, just, just under thrown, but he had, that should have been caught. That should have been oh. caught. He tried to catch it against his chest. It's like it bounced it's, off his yeah. shoulder pads almost, it looked like. So it'll make it a third down and four from the 43. Oh, close to five. Right through, it's right through there. Third down and pretty close to five yards for the ex- for the first down for the Tigers. Big, big third down right here. Girl needs to convert this. Reed taking his time. Looks over the deep hits. Goes back to pass. Sets up in the pocket. Throws played way over, way over. Head of Travis Gray. Or way over. Over oh. Gray's head. Jacobs Gray at the 50-yard line incomplete. And the Tigers will have a punt. Yeah, he got hit hard then. Reed got a rifle for an arm, but it's, yeah. no, it's just the control. Yeah. The problem right now is the control issue. Yeah, he's so smooth. So smooth when he throws. Well, Central's going to get the ball back with a 17-7 to lead. 7.39 to go in this first half of play. Ramos will be back to punt. Oh, this kid's out of, out of outside. Oh, snap, but he's got to get it away. Nice punt by Ramos. It's going to bounce at the 20-yard line, 
and take an imperial bounce inside the 15. Stay away from that. Let it go as far as it will go. It'll, be, it'll go out of bounds at about the 11-yard line, and that's where we'll take over first and 10. Yeah, that's a 7.29, 46-yard punt. Nice. Beautiful roll after it hit the first time. It was. So Central has the ball, first and 10, 17 to 7 lead over the Tigers. They'll be thrown 11 yard line. Going from the west to the east here at Cal Jones Field in El Centro. Osuna, quarterback, has a man in motion. Hand it off over left tackle. Run it downhill and getting a few yards out of it. it will be Jonathan Medina. He'll get across the 15 yard line. About the 17, it looks like. Well, back to about the 15, so gain of four, second down and six. Ethan Ramos and James Ponce combined for the tackle with the, for the Tigers. Second down and six from the 15. And a motion again to the right. And it up up the middle. Right. And five to the wrist right up the middle gets the first down and then some. Out across the 25-yard line to about the 27. And it'll be in the team and once again. About 189 yards against the Tigers in their league game last year. That would be a gain of 12, first and 10, central, at their own 27. Passes it off to Moore. Moore's going to be brought down at the 28 after a gain of just a yard. I think it says Fort Price got into the 29, so it'll be a gain of two, second down and eight. Luna close quick on that. You gotta, you can't give him too much space. He's so fast. Yes, he is. We saw that as a freshman last year. Oh, he brought up late in the season. Yeah. Just a really talented young man as a sophomore now. And it off up the middle. You get across the 30 yard line. That's near the 35, but a little bit short of the first down. But Medina will get a good strong run to the 34, a gain of five. And it will be a third down and about three. And the punt team goes out of the field. Third or fourth? Oh, third. I'm sorry, I have to run down third and think it's dead four. And I'll oh, you know, side they were already on. Angel Navas Bars is going to get it. Nobody's going to touch him. He'll just go to the right side of the field. And as you said, the defense wasn't ready. We weren't even ready. And he'll go all the way for the touchdown, 66 yards. And the Tigers are down 23-7. to seven. Literally nobody touched him. Somebody lost their containment on this, but they weren't ready. The Tiger defense would not stand. That's what, that's what he's arguing. Uh, Sergio Serrano's arguing over. But uh, head rep. Ramsey, you've got to be ready. You got to be. They're down. They came up to the. They, they came up and they set, and that was it. They'll come in for the extra point. Good. It'll be good. With 5:30 to go in this first half of play, is Alpha Spartans 24, the Tiger seven. Imperial Tiger Football Association was started years ago to help the football team with much needed equipment and sending the players to special training now, through their fundraising efforts from the past and now the Imperial Tiger Association is proud of what they have accomplished and what they will continue to do in the future. They're always looking for new members. You can call Victor at 760-960-6317. That's 960-6317 if you're interested in helping out. Go Tigers! By a play, 89-yard drive. Wow. 89-yard drive. Wow. And two oh, minutes, nine seconds off the clock. And I keep doing this. The first carry of the game by Angel Nautilus Bars. He goes 66 yards for the touchdown. But it's Torres, now 18 of 19 on the season with extra points. And it's 24 to 7 Central. Tigers led 7 to 3 at one point. And then Central now with three touchdowns. Here's a kickoff. Be another deep one. And it's going to go into the end zone. Another touchback. Touchback number 31 of the year for Jose Berlin Torres. And the Tigers have the ball first and 10. They'll be at their own 20 yard line. Okay, we got to do something right now to close out the half on the high note. We have Britton Madden's coming in. 
I don't see Padilla. I don't know if he's injured. I'm trying to fight him on the sideline. Maybe after the two fumbles, they may have tried to settle him down and get him onto the sideline. I don't see him. I can't spot him anywhere. The glasses on him. Check him in a minute. First and ten Tigers from the 20 yard line. Adams in the backfield. They get to him. Throw it. Incomplete. Ryan Bonilla had the ball and then was hit by Esparza just as he got the ball and bounced out of his hands. Incomplete. Second down at 10. That looks like a clinch there. Yeah, he's taking the shots. You know, they're, they're hitting. Central yeah. City. Yeah. We're glad to see that. You know, anytime you go against the defending anything, fill in the blank, you're the yeah. defending champion in football here. you got to come with your game. Right now, Central's been doing that. And timeout on the time field. With 526 to go in this first half of play at Central 27, Imperial 7. Ray at Dermot's Floor Covering would like to take this opportunity to say thank you, Imperial Valley, for your patronage. Dermot's Floor Covering has been in business since 1978, working hard to satisfy customers with exceptional products and outstanding service. They're doing something right at Dermot's Floor Covering, so if you're looking to replace your flooring, stop by Dermot's Floor Covering and see the latest style from the shop or gallery, a gallery that will inspire you. Dermot's also offers free estimates valley-wide. Stop by 220 North J Street in Imperial. Start your day off right with your favorite drink from Brickhouse Coffee, next door to Brickhouse Deli at the Lisa Tucker Center in Imperial. Brickhouse Coffee has so many drinks to choose from, hot drinks, blended drinks, or cold drinks, including the best sized tea in the valley with lots of different flavors. Open daily with a convenient drive through And next door, Brickhouse Deli with big, cool, fresh flavors, the valley's premier deli, serving breakfast and lunch. So come visit them both at the Lisa Tucker Center on West Aiton Road in Imperial. Tigers to the second down and 10 at the 20. Make the correction on the score. It's 24 to 7 central. Tigers will stack up three wide receivers to the right side this time and back to pass as Reed gets the ball just before oh, nice he hit. gets hit. And Brendan Adams is going to catch it on the far sideline right at the line of scrimmage. There will be maybe a yard. Yeah, I'm going to give him a gain of a yard. And I stand corrected. The two Adams boys are not brothers. Just a coincidence. Brennan and Brenton. Third down and nine from the 21. Yeah, Michael, Michael Sullivan hit him as soon as he caught the ball, but George Reed took a big hit. He sure did. I was going to point that out. By number 54, Andrew Google. From behind, and, and that's going to get you a little mm. shaky. That would pass. That's a oh, try to set up. He's going to be back. He's going to brought down back at the 12-yard line. And coming up defensively is Joseph Denton on the sack, and the Tigers will have to punt. Go three and out. Wow. Not good. 4.35. Nine-yard loss on that one. And he seemed to think he was going to kick him the strike side, so he seemed to try to avoid him. But he had a full... Who had a steam going already? So deep to receive. And deep in that he's at the 42-yard line of the Tigers is Juan Dominguez. And the Tigers will call timeout. Yeah. With 4.08 to go in this first half of play, it's the Spartans 24, the Tigers 7. No matter what you need to keep your home cool and comfortable, R&K Air Conditioning has it. From complete temp star cooling systems to the latest in Wi-Fi capable thermostats, we have everything you need to stay comfortable. That's why you should make R&K Air Conditioning your first and only call for your cooling needs. Call 760-353-7570 or find us online at rkair.net. Just start. Quality you can feel. Day in and day out, your publicly owned Imperial Irrigation District proudly delivers low-cost, reliable energy service to its customers in the Imperial and Coachella Valley. When compared to other power providers, IID's residential, commercial, and governmental customers all save up to 50% on their monthly energy bills. That's because IID is committed to more than just delivering power. IID is committed to you. IID, where customers always come first. Joey Ramos will be in the end zone when he gets ready to kick this one as the Tigers with a fourth and long and throw 12 will have to punt this. Dominguez deep to receive. High snap. He's going to be able to bring it down, gets the punt off. Pretty good punt. Going to hit at the 43-yard line. Ooh, Martin let go. 
and then it will stop right at midfield. Right at the 50. So the Spartans with a 24 to 7 lead have the ball first and 10 right at midfield with just a few minutes remaining. About four minutes remaining in this first half of play. On homecoming yeah. night. That's yeah. I've got a couple yeah. of scores. Yeah, yeah. quick up to here. Got Paulo Verde over to Lexico at half, 13 to nothing, and Vincent over Calipat, second quarter, 28 to nothing. Yeah, I think Hopewell also leading. We'll get that score for you in a moment as they're playing Mountain Empire. And in motion for Central. Pasuna takes the handoff, rolls out to his right. Heavy pressure, heavy pressure, going to be sacked. Back to the 35-yard line. Tanner Travis once again will come up with it. It'll be a loss. We're going to say his forward progress or where he was hit at was at the 37, so it'll be a loss of 13. Second down and 23. Nathan Villalobos, there, I couldn't find him. Two big sacks, totaling 26 yards in this first half by the Tigers' defense, who've been on the field a lot. In this yeah, game. too much. Yep, too much. But yet they're it's responsible ridiculous. for the only points yeah. for the Tigers. On Ethan Ramos, interception return for the touchdown. Back to passes Osuna. Sets up, passes it over the middle. Oh, and almost intercepted. Intercept. In fact, really, it looked like if he'd have gone for the ball instead of going for the tackle, it could have been another interception for Ethan yeah. Ramos. The ball's incomplete. It'll be a third down at 23. He was there. They read it. I like the way they shifted. They knew something was going that way, and they shifted with it. So just Ronald back into the ball game. Good to see that on the outside yeah. linebacker position on the far side. Third down and 23 at the 37-yard line for the Spartans. Back to passes Osuna. Rolls out to his left. Looks downfield. Passes it. Completes it. Hit and brought down at the Tiger 45-yard line. They're going to bring him down on the reception by Fernando Morales at the 44. It will be a fourth down and about four. I don't know what they're going to do here. 19-yarder on that one. Brandon Silva finally brought him down. That was a long pass. That's a long pass. That's right on the long pass. Yeah. On the run, moving to his left. To his left, right, throwing across his body. Not an easy thing to do. Okay, we got a timeout. They ran the clock down is what they were doing. And with 2.45 to go in this first half of play, it's the Spartans 24, the Tigers 7. Time the day off right by having breakfast at Broken Yolk Cafe. Once again, voted best breakfast in the Imperial Valley by our customers. Thank you. Remember, Broken Yolk strives every day to bring you great service and great food. Still preparing everything fresh daily. Open for breakfast and lunch seven days a week from 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. Log on to Broken Yolk Cafe and join the club or order your meal online. Broken Yolk Cafe on North Imperial Avenue in El Centro. I don't worry anymore about getting stranded with my car breaking down. Why is that? That automotive class I took at Imperial Valley College not only prepared me to fix my own car, it also prepared me for a new career in automotive repair. I like the way you think. I've always wanted to become a welder. Then check out these and other IVC career education classes at imperial.edu. Sparks come out in punt formation with a fourth and four at the Tiger 44, but I wouldn't trust it. For some reason, I'm just thinking he might want to take this, or he might want to find a barrel back deep. It is going to go back to the putter. No, for Torres will no rush whatsoever. Not at all. The last two punts have been zero rush, and the ball will go out of bounds. Great punt by Great punt. Great. Torres all the way down to about the five yard line. This is ninth inside the 20 this year. It'll be right around uh, five or six. Let's see where put it at. It's the six yard line. The Tigers have their back to the wall again. First and ten at their own six. Two thirty-eight. Two thirty-eight to go. I cannot see the scoreboard at all from where I'm at. First and ten, Tigers. Trailing twenty-four to seven, and up up the middle. There'll be nothing there. Be no gain. In fact, maybe a loss of a yard. The Brennan Adams. It will be a loss of a yard. Second down now and 11 from the five. Pick anybody out on that one. No. Sure. No, Lugo had that read from the beginning. Andrew Lugo. Good job for the 
conference. We've only got two guys on the front line. Down Lyman, yeah. Down Lyman, yeah. Well, now we... Linebackers are up. We've got five now. Back to pass in the end zone. Oh, come back, come back, come back. Come back. Yeah, it's going to be intercepted. He should have come back. He should have come back. And the pass for sure. It's going to be intercepted. At the 39-yard line, intercepted by Eric Moreno. His first interception of the season. And the Spartans put the ball first and ten. Four turnover by the Tigers tonight. Wow. And they, and two interceptions. Yes. We're missing Quintero. We are missing Quintero. Running back position. We're having to pass so much. We've never passed as much in a game, huh? No. No. And we're not even at the half yet. Back to pass is Osuna rolling out to his right. Gets away from one tackler. Gets away from another. Going to keep it to the 35. Okay. Fumbles the ball as Sergio Serrano hit him hard. The Tigers ball. are going to recover it. The Tigers will recover the fumble. Serrano oh, hit it, but like he cut the ball, ball through the ball. Exactly. So the Tigers get the football back at the 34-yard line. Sergio Serrano, what a terrific play on the tackle. Forces the fumble and it covers it. Covers it. So first and ten Tigers now at their own 34-yard line. Beautiful blocking, though, by the Spartans. Oh, I was watching that. You got three... Real nice box to get him out to the flat. Three wide receivers to the right side of the field. And it off up the middle to Adams. I mean, nothing there. Gain a yard. He's second down and nine from the 35. They took some time again. He had that right from the beginning. I tell you, the down line for Sparty. Having a heck of a half. Oh, 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 oh. right ball is incomplete. It'll be a forward pass ball is incomplete. It'll be a second down and nine for the Tigers. Uh, Jacob Gray trying to take off before he had the ball. All by himself out there. And we've seen that a few times today, too. Wow. Third down and nine for the Tigers from their own 35. Three wide receivers to the right side. That's the wide side of the field. Going right to left from the east to the west. Listening to the action on KXO Radio of Central California. Back to pass is Reed. Reed gets away from two tacklers. He's not going to get away from the third and fourth, though. And he's going to take a shot. Just should have run out of bounds at the 34-yard line. Just run out of bounds. So got to take on a hit like that. But he gets up. It'll be a loss of a couple. And a fourth down and 11 coming up from the 33. Yeah, there's just nowhere to go. Just run out of bounds. So yeah, or, or throw it away. He had time to throw it away. He got running with the lineman. He got a timeout here. I don't know who. Central. Central call timeout with 53, 53 seconds remaining in this first half of play. It's the Spartans 24, the Tigers 7. For over 60 years, the Imperial Quarterback Club has helped different clubs and sports teams at Imperial High School. The money they raise goes a long way, keeping your kids busy with school activities. Their members are parents and community people who care and want to donate their time. If you would like to become a member, please contact Betty or Larry at 760-355-1312. That's 355-1312. The Quarterback Club wishes the Imperial Tigers a great season. Go Tigers! And he's keeping here at the stadium with 53 seconds to go in this first half. Do we have an updated score for you? Uh, let's see. Vincent Memorial 28 to 0 at the half. Hopeville leading. Let's get that score because it's right on pink on my phone. 41 to nothing in the second. That's, That's what it is. Second. Yeah. 41 to nothing. Hopeville over Mountain Empire in the second quarter. Hopeful's got a strong, strong team. Only one loss this year, and that was to the Tigers. Beautiful. By yeah. Tom was great fund. It will bounce to the 25-yard line, still rolls to the 20, and will stop just inside the 20-yard line of the Spartans. They'll have a ball with about 45 seconds or so to go. About 42. 42 seconds to go before the half, and they have the ball first and 10 through a 19-yard line. Good punt by Joey Ramos has kept the Spartans 
to the 11 the last drive, and uh, or two drives ago, and now the 19 yard line. Oh, my brother said, actually, him and Trace are listening in from out the home. Trisha's at home listening in also. I think Peggy's at home listening. <laughs> Doing homework. And off of the middle, Medina. And Medina will get some positive yardage out to about the 22 yard line, maybe a gain of three. Make it a gain of four to the 23. Got Pitones, Monroe Pitones, and Tanner Travis. Spartans will get the ball in the second half. And so I think they may just keep the ball on the ground and chew up the remainder of this clock. I don't know what he's got to get. 17 seconds. 17 seconds to go in this first half. Back to passes Osuna. Going to pass out to the right side. Going to complete it to Sullivan. Sullivan is going to be brought down by the shoulder pads by Ethan Ramos at the 24-yard line. 25-yard line. Only came to two on that one. Yeah, I think you're, the crowd was wanting a face pass, but he got, got his jersey. Yeah, got him on his jersey. It'll be a game of a couple. And that'll be the end of the first half of play. The score, the Central Spartans 24 the Imperial Tigers 7, and we'll be back to tally up the scoring for you, get the stats for you as well. This right, the time show continues here in just a moment. Hayden Express in Imperial is your one-stop convenience store with full-service car wash, gas, and diesel. It's a place for all your snacks, cold drinks, and ice cold beer. And if you're throwing a party, kegs, wine, and champagne. Everything you need at one convenient location. While you're there, get your vehicle washed and save a bus with eight gallons of gas or diesel and get the 10th car wash free. Yes, Hayden Express is your one-stop convenience store at the corner of Highway 86 and Aiton Road in Imperial. When it comes to Mexican food, El Durape in Imperial does it right. From their special quesadillas, serve the way you like it. Deep fried with cheese, and you add the fillings to tacos, burritos, enchiladas, and more. There's daily specials, too. The food is great, and the service is even better. And don't forget to reserve your tamales for the holidays. El Durape, located at 139 South Imperial Avenue in Imperial. Open Monday through Saturday. Ray at Dermot's Floor Covering would like to take this opportunity to say thank you, Imperial Valley, for your patronage. Dermot's Floor Covering has been in business since 1978, working hard to satisfy customers with exceptional products and outstanding service. They're doing something right at Dermot's Floor Covering, so if you're looking to replace your flooring, stop by Dermot's Floor Covering and see the latest styles from the shop or gallery. A gallery that will inspire you, Dermot's also offers free estimates valley-wide. Stop by 220 North J Street in Imperial. Here's the scoring in this first half. Central would start out the scoring after the Tigers fumbled the first snap of the game. And the Spartans would recover, but the Tigers' defense would hold on to it and uh, would force the Spartans to kick a field goal after the fumble within the 13-yard line. The Tigers gave a net of three yards, and then it was a 28-yard field goal by Jose Bernet Torres. And the Spartans led three to nothing, the 10:47 mark of the first quarter. But the Tigers would come right back and get a 10-yard interception return for touchdown by Ethan Ramos at the 2 43 mark of the first quarter. And the extra point by Edgar Robles would give the Tigers a 7-3 to lead. But from then on, it's been all Spartans with eight seconds to go in the first quarter, a nine-play, 76-yard drive using two minutes and 22 seconds off the clock. Ended up with a 26-yard touchdown run by Jonathan Medina is sixth of the year and with the extra point by Berlin Torres, the Spartans had the lead ten to seven. They would increase it to seventeen seven just moments later on a one play twenty four yard drive or twenty four yard pass after a fumble, second fumble of the night for the Tigers, and it occurred at the twenty four yard line for Imperial and a pass a twenty four yarder from Osuna to Marcus Moore and with the extra point with eleven forty nine to go in the first half at seventeen seven central. And then Central will close out the scoring with 5.30 to go in the first half on a five-play 89-yard drive using two minutes and nine seconds off the clock. The 66-yard run by Angel Navas Barza is 10th of the year in a play that he barely cleared the outside tackle but was never touched. Yeah, never touched. Never touched. And uh, would go in for the touchdown. That gives us the halftime score of 24-7. to seven. And we'll take a look at individual stats as the great Spartan band Entertains the homecoming crowd in El Centro. Just a moment. 
The Imperial Tiger Football Association was started years ago to help the football team with much-needed equipment and sending the players to special training. Now, through their fundraising efforts from the past and now, the Imperial Tiger Association is proud of what they have accomplished and what they will continue to do in the future. They're always looking for new members. You can call Victor at 760-960-6317 if you're interested in helping out. Go Tigers! Start your day off right with your favorite drink from Brickhouse Coffee next door to Brickhouse Deli at the Lisa Tucker Center in Imperial. Brickhouse Coffee has so many drinks to choose from, hot drinks, blended drinks, or cold drinks, including the best iced tea in the valley with lots of different flavors. Open daily with a convenient drive through And next door, Brickhouse Deli with big, full, fresh flavors, the valley's premier deli, free breakfast and lunch. So come visit them both at the Lisa Tucker Center on West Aiton Road in Imperial. No matter what you need to keep your home cool and comfortable, R&K Air Conditioning has it. From complete temp star cooling systems to the latest in Wi-Fi capable thermostats, we have everything you need to stay comfortable. That's why you should make R&K Air Conditioning your first and only call for your cooling needs. Call 760-353-7570 or find us online at rkair.net. Temp star, quality you can feel. Half time score here at Cal Jones Field in El Central. The Central Spartans will be the Imperial Tigers 24 to 7. And for Central, the Nero has soon have been very efficient with one little hiccup. He has completed 12 of 15 passes for 107 yards and a touchdown. The one hiccup was the interception by Ethan Ramos, which is the only points the Tigers have this half. In receiving, four of those catches have gone for 13 yards to Michael Sullivan. Fernando Morales has caught two passes for 27 yards. One swing pass for Jonathan Medina at the backfield was good for just a yard. Marcus Moore came off the bench. Four catches, 59 yards on a touchdown. And then also Skyler Cook, freshman receiver, caught one pass for seven yards in this first half. Rushing, Angel Valdez as far as they had the 66-yarder. The Tiger defense just simply wasn't ready. No, they weren't ready. Not at all. I don't know if they were bunched up. I don't know if it was a quick snap or I don't know what happened. Yeah. I mean, two was that. Tigers weren't ready. He went 66 yards for the touchdown on that. Jonathan Medina has carried the ball 10 times in this game for 58 yards. And then... uh, Quarterback De Niro Suna has been sacked twice and then had a five-yard gain but fumbled it away and recovered by the Tigers for a net of minus 21. Two turnovers by the Spartans in the first half. The Tigers have had four turnovers in this half. And we'll tell you how their stats look as our halftime show continues in a moment with the score. The Spartans 24, the Tigers 7. Day in and day out, your publicly owned Imperial Irrigation District proudly delivers low-cost, reliable energy service to its customers in the Imperial and Coachella Valley. When compared to other power providers, IID's residential, commercial, and governmental customers all save up to 50% on their monthly energy bills. That's because IID is committed to more than just delivering power. IID is committed to you. IID, where customers always come first. Start the day off right by having breakfast at Broken Yolk Cafe. Once again, voted best breakfast in the Imperial Valley by our customers. Thank you. Remember, Broken Yolk strives every day to bring you great service and great food. Still preparing everything fresh and daily. Open for breakfast and lunch seven days a week from 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. Log on to Broken Yolk Cafe and join the club or order your meal online. Broken Yolk Cafe on North Imperial Avenue in El Centro. Halftime score, Central 24, Imperial 7. Here's how the stats look for Imperial and official in the first half. Jordan Reed, at quarterback, has completed 12 of 25 passes for 129 yards. Three of those for 26 yards to Jacob Gray. Five for 49 yards to Joey Ramos. Two for 15 yards to Brendan Adams out of the backfield. And three for 15 yards to Brenton Adams, the receiver. But the rushing department... Just as you said, the Tigers miss Daniel Quintero. Oh, he gosh. Miss. Jesus Padilla, five carries, 18 yards, but did have two fumbles in the first half. And then uh, Jordan Reed, three carries for one yard. Brandon Adams, five carries, 
for one yard, or two yards. Uh, it is. In fact, it's, no, it is one yard, is all it is. So the Tigers rushing in the first half, 20 yards. That's it. But they do have 129 passing in this first half, and trail the Spartans 24 to 7. Again, but we've seen this in every game, basically every game except for the Valley Center game and last week against Plexico. The Tigers get down early and then try coming back and they just have a hard time doing it. Always short. They always come up short. I mean, you look at, uh, like against Tita Ridge, for instance. Tita Ridge is unbeaten at this time. And, uh, when you think of the Tigers in that game, if you remember, Tita Ridge got the ball and went down and scored in about five or six minutes. The ensuing kickoff, Imperial fumbled it away. They scored another touchdown and made it 14 nothing. And then the third play from scrimmage, fumbled it away. It's 21 to nothing. And uh, you're all of a sudden a big hole. Tigers came back to make it a 37-34 game. Had a chance to win it through a pass behind the receiver who was wide open and uh, lost that game 37-34. So we'll see what kind of heart this Tiger team has in the second half. But right now, trail 24-7 to at the half. We got a visitor here. We got a visitor. Here from ASU. Yeah, from ASU. Mario comes in there. <laughs> We're good to see you. Put the headset off a second. Let's talk a second. You'll be all flashy. I won't. I won't be able to keep up with you on that. But we got Mario Prato here, over into Arizona State. You know, yeah. Tell us a little bit of how your summer went. Up. You went back to Connecticut. Yeah, I was, I was able to go to um, uh, ESPN headquarters over there in Bristol, Connecticut. I have a couple of friends that work there, and um, it was just a huge blast to be there at the headquarters, being the kids from the valley. I was just like. I literally stopped in the middle of the campus one day, one day and at one time, and my mentor was, call, was talking to me like, hey, you okay, man? And I, I was like, yeah, bro, I'm just taking it all in because my background, what I've been through, being in Bristol Connecticut, it's something I've never pictured myself being at, at all. Yeah, yeah. Great experience to do that. Now you're at Arizona State. Yeah, Arizona State. Well, it's, it's, well it, it's been a great blessing. It's been a, just a tremendous experience. I'm very grateful for it. Um, I'm waiting for this guy over here that's off the line, waiting for him to come over as well so we could represent the Imperial Valley in a big, big, huge way and make people here, here proud of that there's talent here in the Imperial Valley, not just in sports, but also behind the mic. Hey, you're at the Walter Cronkite Broadcasting yes. School. Is yeah. the initial name for it? I'm not uh, sure. The main name is the Walter Cronkite School of Journalism okay. and Mass Communication. Okay. There, uh, Carol says it, that's like the number one, it is, yeah. number one broadcast school in the nation. I still believe it. There's schools like Syracuse and other kind of stuff, but the opportunities that ASU gives you and just like the connections and the dependability and accountability there are just tremendous. It's, I wouldn't be somewhere else at this point right now. That's great. It's great to have you here. Fear the fork. I think that's how you say it over there, isn't it? Forks up. Forks up. Forks up. Forks up. Forks up. All right. It is. Yeah. That's, Mark, that's, that's how we do it. Great to have you with us. And congratulations. And nice to see you again. Good to see you too. Good to see you. I'll see you guys later, right? Take care. All right. Thanks a lot. Mario, getting opportunities in broadcasting that many, many people would never be able to have the opportunity to do. And great to see him here tonight as he's here at homecoming night at Cal Jones Field where the Central Spartans lead the Imperial Tigers by a score of 24-7. to We'll continue with the halftime scores coming up and the defensive stats for you in just a moment. I don't worry anymore about getting stranded with my car breaking down. Why is that? That automotive class I took at Imperial Valley College not only prepared me to fix my own car, it also prepared me for a new career in automotive repair. I like them these things. I've always wanted to become a welder. Then check out these and other IVC career education classes at imperial.edu. For over 60 years, the Imperial Quarterback Club has helped different clubs and sports teams at Imperial High School. The money they raise goes a long way, keeping your kids busy with school activities. Their members are parents and community people who care and want to donate their time. If you would like to become a member, please contact Betty or Larry at 760-355-1312. That's 355-1312. The Quarterback Club wishes the Imperial Tigers a great season. Go Tigers! Halftime score here, Cal Jones Field in El Central. The Central Spartans leading the Imperial Tigers by a score of 24 to 7. And George, you have some defensive stats for us? That sure do, man. Let me tell you, these four guys have been on the field too long, and you can see by the, all the tackles that they have right now. Again, leading the Tigers, like he has most of the year, is Ethan Ramos. I have him with eight tackles and then one sack. Tanner Travis. Sergio Serrano, 
with three tackles each, and Tanner also had a sack. Garibaldi, James Ponce, Manuel Pitones, who else? Brandon Silva, Nathan Villalobos came to playing time today. Joey Ramos and Andrew Duna each with two also for the Tigers. And I see, oh, Maurice Papadia. I can't forget Maurice. But I think, you know what, they've, they've stopped Maurice. Maurice is usually causing havoc in the factory for the Tigers, and they've got him at least slow down. But yeah. I'm hoping the second half we we can come out and be a different Tiger team, I hope. Well, you know, when you look statistically, you just look at the score first, it's 24 to 7, you figure the Tigers are being blown out. But statistically, the uh, Spartans have 156 yards of offense in the first half, and the Tigers have about 149 yards in the first half. Almost the same. What? But four turnovers oh. have hurt the Tigers. And the touchdown was the interception return by Ethan Rodgers. Yeah. But, uh, but really, statistically, it's not that much different. Wow. I didn't so, know it was that close. I yeah. didn't think it was that close. But the, but the Spartans have taken advantage of four turnovers. Oh, and, gosh. You know, right off the bat, they got three points on the board, even though the Tigers' defense held after the fumble early in the game. And then uh, and then the Tigers moved the ball down and had a first and goal inside the... That's right. And they had that's a penalty, right. and that slowed everything down there. And and so the mistakes that the Tigers have made, yeah. it's really shown in this. And you got to give credit to the Spartans. They can't they of those mistakes. They are here to play. Yeah, yeah. They are here to play. That's what championship teams do. Uh, scores. We have some other scores. If we could get some halftime scores of other areas. We mentioned at the beginning of the show that one game is in the books for the weekend, and that is the Brawley High Wildcats defeated Southwest Eagles last night by a score of 49-7 to across town, playing a rare Thursday night game. But other games that are going on tonight. Yeah, okay. I got Oakville over Mount Empire to have 41 to nothing. Uh, Vincent at the half over Calipat 28-0. Paulo Verde at the half also against Calexico 13 to nothing. 13 to nothing. Yeah. So Plexico we'll keeping in the ball game there. Oh, and then the Yankees over the Astros 4-1. 4-1. That's the final. That's the final, yeah. Then we mentioned Oakville. They're beating Mount Empire pretty well tonight, 41 to nothing, and they have a 6-1 and one record coming into the night. That one blemish was to Imperial. Yeah. So, yeah, Oakville's got a good ball club. No, they do. Their first half, but even against Imperial, it's 6 to nothing. 6 to nothing, yeah. They yeah, didn't do anything, and Imperial started going into the second half, which we're hoping they'll do tonight. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, the first half was a 6 to nothing game. I want to Lee Elder checked in from Talmadge, Ohio. 42 hey. degrees back there. It's a frost warning for the night. Well, I'm sweating right now. <laughs> I'll, I'll take this. <laughs> he also said all his time here as the sports editor of the Imperial Valley Press. He said he had a lot of conversations with Cal Jones through the field. Learned a lot about oh. football from him. Great football, man, Cal. I had some great football teams here at Central. Then he had some fun with them once. He didn't like a quote of his that he used. So I thought, yeah, I, I can picture Cal with that. <laughs> I remember at uh, at one time when I was doing television and doing sports and television, and I would come and see Cal and we'd talk and what have you. And he said, uh, and I had that Hey Mickey commercial, you know, you probably remember that. Yeah, hey, Mickey. So, that would be something. And I, yeah, I had, and I had Cal said, uh, why won't you put me on your team? And I said, well, let's put you on it. So we filmed it right there, and then we insert edit in. So we had him into the deal too. Cal Jones is a great guy and had some terrific football teams. Uh, I think back in the 60s, and then came back again in the 80s. Yeah, the 80s yeah. And uh, it just had some terrific field, uh, games here. And then they appropriately named yep. this field Cal Jones Field. Yes, they here, et cetera. And they're building huge buildings over to the side for science and mathematics. And I'm not sure they said four different architecture. Architecture. Those four things. Yeah. Architecture. But there are some huge, huge buildings, pillars that are going up right now. And I would think by the time Carol plays here again in a couple of more years, uh, you'll see buildings over there, and they'll be quite impressive. They are very, very large. Oh, uh, listen to the fire fireworks. Yeah. They just announced the queen. I didn't catch the name. I'm yeah. sorry. We're, we're in a spot where it's hard to hear the announcer and uh, take a look at the fireworks. They have them too near our side, too. We'd have to stand up and walk outside to look at them like we do with the scoreboard. But impressive fireworks.
fireworks you may hear them popping off in the background. And uh, we're just a few moments away from the second half kickoff. Both teams still in the locker rooms getting their final thoughts together before the second half. But as you mentioned, the Spartans will be receiving the ball to open up the second half. It's not too soon to look at ratings. And uh, just to give you an idea how Division Three looks coming into tonight, Scripps Ranch still the only unbeaten team in Division Three. And they're at 7-0 and coming into tonight. Hilltop is number two, San Diego number three, and then Central number four. Brawley is number five, and then La Jolla number six. West Hill is number seven. Modern Day Catholic is number eight, and Imperial number nine coming into this game. They'll need to be in the top 12, I believe, to secure a spot into the playoffs. Imperial at eighth would be in that spot right now. And uh, they go by the power rankings in San Diego CIF. And uh, even if Imperial were to lose tonight, I don't think it would hurt him much in the power rankings. They may move down a spot, but nothing more than that. But a win tonight would elevate them up into the top five. So that's what they have to look forward to. In other teams, the Southwest Eagles were coming into this game tonight were number 12. So they're breaking right on the brink of it, but did get that big loss to Brawley last night. In Division 4, of which Calexico is in, and they're keeping Palo pretty close right now. They're just outside of the top 12. That is led by Santana, the only unbeaten team in Division 4. Montgomery is number two. You know, we were at Montgomery High School last year. Yeah, that's who to do that football game last year. Sarah, number three, Escondido, four. Loya Country Day is five. Patrick Henry is number six. Classical Academy, number seven. And Tri-City Christian, number eight. Now, Miguel is number ten. They're fun to watch. That's yeah. <laughs> the one around that their quarterback has. We watched him last year. Lavalier, I think, was his name. And uh, that was a lot of fun to watch him. And he's throwing lights out again this year. But now we go three and four in the year. Are there in about 12th or 10th position. And in Division 5, of which the remaining schools in the Valley are in. And I'll pull them back because I... Oh, let's see here. In Division 5 rankings, the number one team is Castle Park, and they're the only unbeaten team in Division 5. Vincent Memorial, number 2, at 6-1. and one. Oville, number 3, at 6-1. and one. They have a meeting coming up next week. Yeah, next week, I think next it week, is. Yeah. I should get a good game right there. He had to be a, a barn burner there. Mission Bay, number 4, and then Palo Verde is number 5, and Palo Verde is leading tonight over Texaco to have. Claremont, number 6, El Cajon Valley, number 7. And I like just watching... Oklahoma Valley getting better as they were down. Uh, you know, they were 0 and 10. They were 1 and 9. They, they hadn't won a game in a couple of years. And get, as the kids playing into the three and four on the season, Crawford is next. Follow Escadilla Charter and then Kelly Patria. Right on the edge right now. They would be in the playoffs, but they've got to maintain their position right now. They are losing to Vincent Memorial in uh, their game tonight. So that kind of gives you what the rankings look like now, and we'll keep you updated as the weeks continue. Next week, we will be back at home. In fact, the next two games, the final two in the regular season, will both be at home. Again, Southwest next week in the Johnny Romero uh, helmet contest will be next Friday night. Fire helmet, right? Fireman's helmet. And then the final week, we'll have Palo Verde. That's the final regular season game. will be against Palo Verde at home. The Yellow Jackets will come into town. And then uh, we'll have to see what our bait is to see if we'll have a playoff game or not. Now it's Vincent 35 over Calipatria. Uh, nothing. Yeah, 35 to nothing in the third quarter. Vincent Memorial meeting Calipatria in that one. Yeah, I enjoyed watching Calipatria a couple of weeks ago. That was a good game against O'Farrell Charter. Oh, Charter, yeah. I think it's a newer school. Yeah, uh, O'Farrell, yeah, Charter Academy. And I think they're. They got they're, good uh, athletes up there. I enjoyed that game. And that was. Due to Cedric Thompson getting Oh, that's yes, right. That's right. Yeah. yeah. When they retired Cedric Thompson's jersey there in Calipat, before my steps on David Shaw, back when he was coaching in Calipat, went on to play for Minnesota Golden Gophers. Golden Gophers. Minnesota, yeah. Yeah. Four year starter. Big, well, I think he came in like a third game of the season and never gave it up. He was started from then on. Then went on to the Miami Dolphins side with my guy. Miami Dolphins also got to play with the Patriots, Cincinnati Bengals, and Minnesota Vikings. Okay. 
and it, that was fun. We had a good time. Then we got together at uh, the Inferno. Oh, okay. Hey, his wife had him a little surprise party there. The Inferno had a little video montage that was so pretty. Uh, got to watch him like, when he was running. Right. Yeah. yeah. He had eighteen hundred, over eighteen hundred yards one year, and just over fourteen his junior year. And he told how much he loved coming oh. from the valley and playing oh, yeah, 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 he did. He said he owes it all to Calipan. Made him who he is. I think you know, there's been some really good football players down there. Remember Wayman Hamilton? Wayman went on to play at BYU. BYU starting running back at BYU. And back in our time, Manny, Romney, Benita, and Romney, yeah. Noel Lauros, uh, Barros, Manuel Barros, yeah. Alan Hill. Alan Hill. Oh, yeah, they've had a good athlete for him, you bet. Good times when Imperial Calipatria and Holville were at the top of the old Chaparral League. I'm waiting for the kickoff here in the second half, and the Tigers kicking off from the east, heading to the west. And deep to receive for the Spartans. Let's see, on one side is Eric Moreno. And the kick will bounce at the seven yard line, fumbled and then pick up at the five. It's away from a couple of tacklers, but brought down up the 15 yard line is Fernando Morales. And it will be first and ten central, and they'll start off this first possession of the second half at the 15 yard line. Hey, you popped with a couple of times there. Yeah, uh, was able. The Tigers were able to converge on it fairly quickly. And Delatore finally brought him down. Luis Delatore. So first and ten, they're going to say he went to the 16 yard line of those parts he got, and that's where the Sparks have it. First and ten of the 16. More in motion. And up to Medina, but penalty flags go down. Legal procedure against yeah. the Spartans. Make it a first and 15 and bring it back to the 11-yard line. Been a relatively penalty-free game for both sides, but it seems to have come at some big time, especially for the Tigers on one drive where they were able to get down inside the red zone and then a penalty moved it back to yeah. try to field goal and missed it. Back to pass Osuna. And it completed to more. No, stop it. He had it and was running before he got it. Yeah. It was then completed to 12. It'll be a second down of 15 from the 11. Yeah, I think you knew Ethan Ramos was coming. I know that run. Yeah, we do. <laughs> what did I say? I had him, I think, with nine tackles. Stops a run of five completions in a row for Rosina. Yeah, I love watching Ramos, especially when he played those San Diego team. Oh, he's like playing way off or more. He's just wide open to the side over here. Going to pass it. Oh, interference. And a penalty flag going to go down. It's intercepted by Brandon Silva, but I think it's skipped off the ground maybe. But it will be a pass interference against the Tigers. Good call at the 23-yard line. As Luna got over the back of the receiver. And that will give the Spartans some breathing room. Yeah, was, I think it was overthrown, but... He still hit him. Yeah. He still hit him. Yeah, it, really it could have been completed, but the 15-yard penalty will go against Imperial. It'll make it a first down and 10 yards to go now, bringing the ball out to the central 26-yard line with the ball first and 10. Yeah, the defensive backs are way off the way receivers off. in the slot. It's just way off. I mean, there, there's not anybody within eight yards of Marcus Moore, and he scored that touchdown earlier. In fact, the only touchdown pass caught tonight is 10 yards away from him. They're going to hand it off on a jet sweep to the near side. Nice Turning the corner of the 30-yard line. little hold on the outside. That's what's going to be is a holding call. Brandon Silva drills Sullivan, but it will be a holding call. A good call at that. Is the, actually, it was Sullivan on the hold, and it was Fernando Morales on the run, but yeah, Sullivan tackled the Imperial defensive back. I see who it was. But it will nullify a good run by Morales. Oh, your friend that hit him hard. Oh, yeah. It upset the Spartan side. I mean, it was a clean hit. It was a clean hit, yeah. Barrel through him. Yeah, he should have gone out of bounds. He didn't go out of bounds right there. So they'll bring the hold back from the point of the infraction and we'll put it back to the 28-yard line. What do you got? We got trips to 
the left. The 11 yard gain and then the 10 yard penalty. First and nine, back to pass is Osuna. Passes it to Sullivan. Going to catch it. Be brought down immediately at the 35, but it just seems that the defensive backs are playing really they loose. Can't see them. Very loose. It'll be at the 35. Gain of seven. Third down and two coming up. Yeah, both linebackers, and Bill had both linebackers bit him, and all he did is roll to the right. He's got too much time, and they're too loose. And correction, that three second down and two from the 35. That was smart. Well, central. They're taking their time getting the line of scrimmage. Get that clock on. More emotion to the near side. Back to pass so soon. A pump fakes one way, goes out to the other way, has room to run, has a lot of room to run out to the 40 yard line, the 45 to the 50. And they can be brought down at the Tiger 49 yard line, but a long run of 16 yards by the Nero Asuna on a first down for the Spartans. Once he decided to run out to the oh, outside, there's just nobody up. Yeah, good oh, read, good uh, read by Asuna. Yeah. Bring him down right at the 50. I'm going to say he went out of bounds on the far side at the 50. It'll be a 15-yard gain. Morales on the sweep to the near side. He'll be brought down from behind. Good job, Ethan Ramos. Holds it to just a yard gain. It'll be a second down and nine from the 49. He is all over. Ethan Ramos all over the field for the Tigers. That's some nice blocking on front line for the Spartans. They just hold their block so nice. It's holding Maurice, but yeah, check. Second down and nine from the 49 of the Tigers. Back to pass Osuna. Has a lot of time back there. Now gets a little bit of pressure, rolls out to his right. Looks down field, throws it. Sullivan catch it. No, it's Morales who catches it up in the air. Hosting brings it down immediately, but a great catch that is made. By Fernando Morales for a first down at the Tiger 33. He got hit hard, too, as soon as he caught that ball. 16-yarder on that one. Nice back was yeah. of it. Man, that's a tough catch for Morales to make. His bones, they nailed it back there. The deep team for the Spartans, though, when he's keep looking at All the substitutions going right, in there? Exactly. Right up the middle. Yep, the oh. hand off a penalty against the Tigers offside. Outside. Offsides against Imperial and make it a first and five and bring it inside the 30 yard line of the 28. Two penalties against the Tigers on this drive. First and five from the Tiger 28. It's Central 24, Imperial 7. As we're in the third quarter of play. Three wide receivers will go to the left side of the field for Central. Again, the Tigers fits it back, playing way off. Moore goes in motion to the near side. Hands off to the inside hand, off and turning the corner, getting some running room is Jonathan Medina. He'll get the first down before being driven out of bounds at around the 20 yard line. It'll be a gain of eight and a first down for Central. Eight yard they, gain, but. They lined up spawn to the right, or left, I'm sorry, and then they go right. Man, there's nobody out there. Yeah, there's nobody out there. Nobody. He got eight yards, but I was expecting him to get more than that. Tiger shifted well. to their right to cover that, and they come to the Spartan right. Osuna, senior quarterback. Completed 14 of 17 passes tonight. Does have one interception. Back to pass on the face. Rolls out to his left. Has some room to run again. Tanner Travis can't get to him. Ramos will... Have him go out of bounds. I don't think he wanted any piece of even on that one. No. But he would get about five yards on the play. And a second down and five coming up from about the 15-yard line. They get the 16. No gain of four. But do like what the Sparks are doing, Nick, is they're using up the clock. They're taking their time. Methodical. Yes. 
That's smart. Right now it's not right because he went out of bounds. 39 to go in the third quarter. Inside hand off to Sparza. The Nava Sparza, and he'll get close to the first down. He's near the 10 yard line. Just depending on where the spot is before being brought down. Andrew Luna and Ethan Ramos come back for the tackle for the Tigers. He'll get three. Ball to the 11-yard line, so third down. Nope, it is going to be a first down and goal from the 10. On the gain of four. Now they're doing it to the right. Now they must wait to the right. Watch to the left. There you go. Nope, Big the hand off. Goes back to pass to Suna. Looks to the info. Touchdown. Just that quickly. It's a touchdown. The pass goes to Brian Martin. Of 10 yards, and it's now a 30 to 7 central lead. Good fake. Good fake. They threw everybody up. Who's right in behind the defensive halfback? Almost all by himself there. Nice pass. Good run by Martin on the slant. Extra point. And this extra point this time is going to be kicked by Sebastian Corindell. And with 7.57 to go in the third quarter of play, it's now the Spartans 31, the Tigers 7. Aiden Express in Imperial is your one-stop convenience store with full-service car wash, gas, and diesel. It's a place for all your snacks, cold drinks, and ice cold beer. And if you're throwing a party, eggs, wine, and champagne. Everything you need at one convenient location. While you're there, get your vehicle washed and save the with eight gallons of gas or diesel and get the tenth car wash free. Yes, Aiden Express is your one-stop convenience store at the corner of Highway 86 and Aiden Road in Imperial. 10 play 84-yard drive. That takes up four minutes and three seconds off the clock, capped by the 10-yard touchdown pass from De Niro Asuna to Brian Martin. And for Brian, that's his first touchdown reception of the season. Wow. Good kid. Good kid. Cool. Pulls out and does it. I'm very, very strong. Enjoy coaching him. Kickoff. We'll go back to the end zone. Tigers will get it up 20. First and 10 Tigers would be his own 20 yard line. First time they touched the ball in the second half, and we're almost halfway through it. As the tight, as the Spartans use four minutes and three seconds off the clock to start off the second half and cap it with a 10 yard touchdown pass from Osuna to Mark. For Coronel on his extra point, he's now 16 and 19 on the season. Okay, good. We got the deal back out. Jacob Gray, Joey Ramos. To the left. Brett Adams to the right, and in motion is Gray. And it out on the inside to Padilla, and Padilla trying to have some yards out to near the 24 yard line, making the 23. The gain of three, second down at seven. Christian Borst with the tackle for the Spartan. I have him with the first tackle. Wow. behind us. Incomplete. Thrown behind the intended receiver. Third down and seven for Imperial to 23. Get him open. Two behind him. So third, third, and third and seven for the Tigers. Read now 26 passes thrown in this game. We're just getting started in the third quarter. Back to pass. That's up. Looks over the middle. Has receiver wide open. Andrew Luna throws behind him. Under heavy pressure, gets knocked down. or Just about gets knocked down. The ball's incomplete. And three and out. And the Tigers will have to punt. And Joseph Hargrave wrapped him right as soon as he was throwing the ball. He was open. Luna was open. No, Luna was open. Yeah. There's, there's no, there's too much pressure right now. It was a good read in going to the right spot. However, he just didn't have the time to be able to get it there properly. Deep to receive for the Spartans will be Juan Dominguez. He'll be standing at his own 45-yard line. Ramos on the punt. He'll get it off. Nice. That's a pretty good punt. Get it at the 50-yard line. 
and just go parallel to a little bit, and then we'll go into Spartan territory at the 48, and uh, they'll take over possession first and 10, make it at the 49-yard line. Thinking this week, I just did not see this game going. No, this not enough, yes, no. I thought it would be like a brawling game, just back and forth, back and forth. But hard turnovers, been big Tigers with four turnovers tonight, the most they've had in any game this year. First and 10 Central. Looks like the same defensive setup for the Tigers. Well, they're on 49, man in motion to the near side, Morales. And off the other way to Medina. Medina straight up the middle. Finally gets hit by a Tiger at the 40. Still on his feet inside the 35. And near the 30-yard line before the Tigers will bring it down. But not until a 21-yard gain in the first down for Central. First down. Omar Garibaldi finally brought him down. 87 yards rushing now for Jonathan Medina and a touchdown on 12 carries. First and 10 Central to Tiger 30. Back to pass Osuna. Sets up. Pass it out to the flat. Better complete it to Sullivan. Gets the 20 yard line. Makes it for the 25. Fumbles the ball. Or looked like a flawless fumble, but he held on to it. And he will get down to near the 20. It's close to the first down. Looks like it went up into the air a little bit, but it must have been seeing things. And it will be a first down of the 10 yard gain. Another first down. First and 10 now at the 20. Yeah, Bill Lobos is trying to strip him. When he slowed down, I think it was Maurice. But he finally brought it down. For Sullivan is sixth catch of the night. I like the way he waited for his blockers, so though. That was smart. For 40 yards. Three wide receivers to the left side of the field. Man in motion to the near side is Moore. Let's send it back to pass. That's a pump fake. What's the other way over the middle? Has a receiver. Completes it. Touchdown central. Where's the end? About the one yard line. One yard line. His knee went down. That's all about by himself. It was to Morales, and again, he was wide open, right over the middle of the field. No sooner just threw a dart. And, no well, penalty flag is down, though. Billy oh, Bozo is going to bring that one back. I didn't see the flag, but the referees were talking in the middle of the field. That's probably the there. He's there. on the far side of the 19 yard line. hard to see with the glare. Yeah. So, it looked like a near touchdown will be called back on a penalty. And the Spartans will have a first down and 15 and bring the ball back to the 25-yard line. I don't want to think with Moore, when you watch him in motion, when he makes his turn to go forward, he already makes the turn and has taken at least another yard step before they snap the ball. Canadian football, you can do that. You can't do it here. Hand off oh, on the outside. Okay. Face now, the, the Spars and penalty flag is going to go against the Tigers now for a face masking call by Ethan Ramos. After the game, we'll go to the 26-yard line. Make it to the 16-yard line, I should say. From a four-yard game. Oh, they told somebody on the sideline they got to go. Wow. I'm not sure. They're telling head coach David Pena about something over the side. I can't see what they're discussing about, but... Gain is going to go down to the 16-yard line. It'll be a nine-yard gain, and then there'll be a face masking call that'll go after it against Imperial. Seventy-nine yards on three carries for Angel Nava Esparza. So this is going to make it a first and goal from the nine. Timeout approved. Timeout called by the Tigers. With 5.52 to go in the third quarter of play, it's the Spartans 31, the Tigers 7. When it, com- when it comes to Mexican food, El Zarate in Imperial does it right. From their special quesadillas, serve the way you like it. Deep fried with cheese, and you add the fillings to tacos, burritos, enchiladas, and more. It's a daily special, too. The food is great, and the service is even better. And don't forget to reserve your tamales for the holidays. El Zarate, located at 139 South Imperial Avenue in Imperial. Open Monday through Saturday. 
Ray at Dermis Floor Covering would like to take this opportunity to say thank you, Imperial Valley, for your patronage. Dermis Floor Covering has been in business since 1978, working hard to satisfy customers with exceptional products and outstanding service. They're doing something right at Dermis Floor Covering, so if you're looking to replace your flooring, stop by Dermis Floor Covering and see the latest styles from the Shaw Floor Gallery, a gallery that will inspire you. Dermis also offers free estimates valley-wide. Stop by 220 North J Street in Imperial. First to go from the eight and up the middle to Nava Esparza, the Tigers will stop him after a gain of a yard, maybe? No, there be no gain on that. It'll be a second down and goal from the eight. Brendan Silva and Ethan Ramos combined. And up to Nava Esparza on the right side. He'll get inside the five yard line before being brought down at the four. The flag may have been thrown, but I, I don't see it after all. If I made some just a motion for it, it'll be a game for third down and goal from the four yard line. Uh, as far as five carries, 83 yards and a touchdown for Central. And Central sent in five players to replace all at once with this third and goal situation coming up. There was, there was a flag on that. I thought I might have saw one. And the flag is going to go against Central and it's going to bring it out to the 13-yard line. Didn't see what it was called, but I suspect it was a hold the way the, where the flag was being thrown to. I think it's going to be a hold against Central, and that penalty will make it now a second down and goal from the 14. Back to Paso Suna. As a receiver, going to complete as the sixth of zero defensive back slips and falls. And he'll go in for the touchdown without being touched as Morales. And that will be his first touchdown of the night, sixth of the season, and it's now a 37 to 7 Central lead. I missed it. I was watching the, the rush. And the defender for the Tigers, I'm not sure who it was that was back there, just slipped and fell. And it was just a post pattern over the middle, and those soon they hit him right in the middle. It was number eight. Extra point by Cornell. It is going to be good. So with 5-10 to go in the third quarter play, it's now Central 38, Imperial 7. The Imperial Tiger Football Association was started years ago to help the football team with much-needed equipment and sending the players to special training. Now, through their fundraising efforts from the past and now, the Imperial Tiger Association is proud of what they have accomplished and what they will continue to do in the future. They're always looking for new members. You can call Victor at 760-960-6317 at 960-6317 if you're interested in helping out. Go Tigers! On a drive that lasted two minutes and six seconds, covering 51 yards on six plays, capped by the 14-yard touchdown pass from De Niro Asuna to Fernando Morales. Second touchdown, make a third touchdown pass of the night for Osuna, who now has 17 on the season. And has completed five of six of his passes there in the second half. Kick's going to go in the end zone, almost through the goalpost, in fact. Wow. <laughs> I thought he was to the goalpost. He's got a leg out of his nerve, man. Oh, man, oh, man. We're talking about Jose Berlin Torres. That's, I think, his 32nd touchback of the season and third of the night. And the Tigers have the ball first and 10. They'll be thrown 20-yard line. And like I said, in high school, or even in college, if you can get a guy kicking through the end zone every time. High school, you take it out of the 20, college, take it out of the 25, and that's got to get more lysing after a while when you're having to start back that far all the time. So he's going to hand it off. But he is going to break open a little bit, get out to the 25, across the 30, gets the first down to near the 32-yard line. It'll be a first down for the Tigers. Yeah, at the 32. Now, that's what I expected from this is the deal right there. 33 yards down, seven carries for Padilla. First and 10 from the 32 for the Tigers. And they'll bring Tanner Travis in for an extra blocking back. And off Padilla again, he's going to get stacked up at the line of scrimmage. There's nowhere to go on that one. 
and it's going to be a loss. Back to the 29, so a loss of three, second down and 13. Good job by Hargrave. Joseph Hargrave with the defensive lineman with the Spartan. Held his ground. This is a good, a very good Spartan team. And it up with the middle of the team. He's just not getting the block at all. Nothing. Look at that. They were One, stunned. two, three, five Spartans right there. Angel Nava, as far as a kind of stunned from his linebacker position and got in there very quick. And it's going to be a loss back to the 28, another loss of a yard. So third down at 14 to the 28. He's had nowhere to go on that ball. Oh, they're, right. they're on their heels right now. But he stays in the game. He's to the left side of Redus in the shotgun. It goes back to pass rolling out to his right. Throws it downfield as a receiver. But Joey Ramos catches it, gets the first down at around the 42-yard line. No, oh, they're going to say he was bobbling it. I thought he had it, but his back was to us. The referee said, no, he was bobbling it, and it will go incomplete. So the Tigers will have to punt. Ooh, I didn't see that. I, I, had, I had already yeah. looked away. I thought he was, had the first down. Yeah, I thought he did too, but like I said, his back was to us, running away from us on the far side. The referee right on the spot said, no, he was juggling it. He didn't have possession. So the fourth and 14 of the 28, the Tigers will have to punt once again. We'll have Dominguez deep to receive, standing at his own 40-yard line. Ramos stays in to punt. Good snap this time. Ooh, and a punt. Might have been touched a little bit. He's got a roll to a stop at the 46-yard line of the Spartans. And they'll have the ball first and 10 at that point at the 46. 324 to go in the third quarter. Central leading at 30. Eight to seven. Didn't expect this. So, I was kind of shocked. Yeah, I'm very shocked. I on paper, this was going to be a very close game. Very, yeah, it's so even. Right now, everything is just all central. Offensively playing very, very well. Defensively, they're giving imperial nothing. Back to pass so soon. A lot of time. Passes off, incomplete, intended for Sullivan at the 50-yard line. And it'll be a second down and 10. Sixty-four for the Tigers is in. Humberto Sanchez. In some playing time with the Tigers. Owen Hernandez also on the front line. Stops a string of five in a row by Osuna, who hands it off up the middle. Gets hit hard at the 49-yard line. And the ball carrier, first we've seen of Carlos Gomez tonight. And he'll get out to the 50-yard line. The game of four. Third down and six coming up for Central. Right at the midfield line. About six, yeah. At that or Travis. Doing a good job at the second half of the Tigers. Getting some penetration. Third down and six from the 50. Man in motion is more coming to the near side. Now Toronto goes back to the left. Back to passes Osuna. Sets up. Throws it over the middle. Has a receiver. Over catches it. It just loses his footing. Otherwise, that's a touchdown at the 25 yard line for Imperial. First down. And he was coming from in motion. Yeah. And swirled around to get that one. They just let him go right by him. Don't understand that. 25 yard on that one. First and 10 central for Tiger 25. Hey, James Ponce just sat there watching. He went right by him. Then go behind. 189 yards passing now for Osuna. He hands it off up the middle to Gomez, and Gomez battles his way. For about four yards, and that was a tough four yards. It'll be a second down and six from the 21. Hey, battling Ethan Ramos and Hoyle Hernandez. Second down and six Spartans from the 21, taking their time going up, using a lot of the clock here in this third quarter. That's smart. I like that they do that. Yep. Pretty smart. 
Man in motion again is Moore. Hand it off Gomez up the middle. Gomez runs to the back of his lineman, but still continues to battle inside the 20 yard line. A lot of whistles blow it dead at the 18, again at three. Third down and three coming up. Ethan Ramos again. I've had him with 15 for the night. He is all over the place. Third and three from the 18 for the Spartans. Gomez stays in the backfield, gets the call over by tackle. He gets met and brought down by a whole host of Tigers. Yeah, Nathan Villalobos made the initial hit. Right. He just stood him up straight. Stood him up. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, it looked like he was lifting out Toronto. But he's okay. He's played a good game tonight, too. Yeah. I was so excited for him last week. After going out last year with that knee and the dust. Took forever to rehab that. Loss of two on that play, by the way. And they're setting it up for a 38 yard field goal. Ball is down. Oh, it's not going to make it. It looked like it might have either just hooked it too much or possibly touched by the Tigers, but it will be no good. And Imperial's deep end holds. The Tigers will take over possession at their 20 yard line. 34 seconds. 34 seconds. This whole quarter is Ooh, almost this, this is a long quarter. Now. All central in this quarter. 34 seconds to go in the third quarter. Central scored two touchdowns after leading 24 to 7 at the half. Throw the ball first and 10 throw 20. Jordan Reese stays in a quarterback, makes the handoff, goes back to pass. Has to try to roll. One Spartan two rolls him around, rolls to his left, looks downfield, and throw it short, completed to Brenton Adams, and he'll go out of bounds at about the 27-yard line. Seven-yard gain would be a second down of three. He pushed out of bounds by... I figured out Nava Esparza. Asaya. Second down and three. And I'll put the middle to the D. If the D will get the first down across the 30 yard line out to about the 35 before being brought down. Right, Martin brought him down. That'll be a gain of seven. First and ten Tigers. Pretty well. I'll pick up the rest of the quarter. I'm afraid 16 seconds left. Tigers may get one more snap before the end of the third quarter. The D at 36 yards on 10 carries. But that's been about it, rushing for the Imperial. That's yeah, that will be the end of the quarter. Survival three quarters of play here in Del Central. The Central Spartans, 38. The Imperial Tigers, 7. Start your day off right with your favorite drink from Brickhouse Coffee, next door to Brickhouse Deli at the Lisa Tucker Center in Imperial. Brickhouse Coffee has so many drinks to choose from, hot drinks, blended drinks, or cold drinks, including the best iced tea in the valley with lots of different flavors. Open daily with a convenient drive through And next door, Brickhouse Deli with big, bold, fresh flavors, the valley's premier deli, serving breakfast and lunch. So come visit them both at the Lisa Tucker Center on West Station Road in Imperial. No matter what you need to keep your home cool and comfortable, RK Air Conditioning has it. From complete temp star cooling systems to the latest in Wi Fi capable thermostats, we have everything you need to stay comfortable. That's why you should make RK Air Conditioning your first and only call for your cooling needs. Call 760-353-7570 or find us online at rkair.net. Just start. Quality you can feel. Starting the fourth quarter, Tigers going left to right now from the west to the east here at Cal Jones Field in El Centro. Trailing the Spartans 38-7. to seven. See if the fourth quarter come back or not. That uh, was deep. Could it be intended for Joey Ramos? And it was way thrown out in front of him incomplete. Yeah, he, Second Joey, I think Joey stopped around. I think you're right. I don't think he had time to throw. 
Yeah, which he hasn't had a whole lot of that or not. Central has put a lot of pressure on Jordan Reed today. The deal stay in the backfield with him from the shotgun. Two wide receivers to the right side, two to the left. With the one to the left. And I'll put the middle of the D and E here. Oh, yeah, yeah. At the line of scrimmage, no gain. Third down and ten from the 35. He's done nowhere on that. No, give it a cure here in the heart. Central deep that step at a big at that point now. Third down and ten for the Tigers from their own 35. Andrew Luna and Brenton Adams and Joey Ramos will get split out to the right. Ryan Bonilla split out left. He's been quiet tonight. Just haven't heard much from him. No catches. Back to pass is Reed. As a receiver, Joey Ronald is going to catch at the 40-yard line, breaks a couple of tackles, will dive to try to get the first down. He's going to be right at the 40-yard, 5-yard line, and it looks like he's got the first down if he gets to the line. And it is first down. First down. Got it. 10-yard. Man, Joey Ramos, big play there. A lot of running after the catch. A lot of running. I thought to watch him run after he, the catch. He's exciting. Yes, he is. Good ball there. I guess we could say the best we've ever seen is receiving. Yeah, he got all the records. All the records. <laughs> Hand out to Padilla at the middle. He gets hit by the line of scrimmage. He'll battle his way to get back to the line of scrimmage at the 45. No gain. Second down and 10. Not fooling anybody up the middle no. on that oh, no. at all. 36 yards on 12 carries now for Padilla. Brian Martin was there to make the stop almost as soon as he got the ball. Just Central, Central's defense is almost like they have extra players out there. You know, they just seem to be everywhere well, they need to be. There's so much blue, it's so bright. Yeah. Back to pass is Reed. Under heavy pressure from behind. Looks downfield. Has a receiver going to complete it to Ramos at the 35 yard line. It went out of bounds immediately. They're going to say he went out of bounds at the 31 of Central. Nice job on a play and throw or throw and catch from Reed to Ramos. Yeah, man. Beautiful pass on the run. 24-yarder. And the first and 10 Tigers now at the central 31-yard line. Take the handoff. Reed rolls to his right. A lot of pressure. And a right big right out of bounds at about the 35-yard line. Just didn't have any time back there again. And it will be a loss back to the 35, a loss of four, second down of 14. I was watching Brenton Meadows. He was open. Headed in for the end, but he just had no time. Well, the Central's defense has just been relentless on Jordan tonight. I think he's had to run for his life more than any game we've seen yeah. this year, including Valley Center has always been known for their defenses. Second down and 14 from the 35. Uh, Tigers yeah. move. Right side of the line. Move just a little bit back, a little too soon. And uh, Rollins is going to get called for the illegal procedure. You know, he's moving out to the right tackle. He's at the tackle. Right. So who's, who that. is snapping? 65. Yeah. I just noticed that. Yeah, I did too. I show 65 in here. Mendenhall. Is that Hall? Yeah, we're back to the 65 number instead of the 87. Okay. Older so Mendenhall is snapping. It snaps it back to Reed. Looks over, going to get it to Brent oh, Adams. Going going to to Robert. Robert. It's going to be a loss. Yeah, Brent Adams broke towards the center of the field from being split out to the right. That's going to be another loss of four on that one. So third down and about 23 from the 44. What would you call that, a screen? Yeah, a little bubble screen. Bubble screen? Uh, and it, and they were all over him. As soon as he caught the ball, there were two Spartans hanging on him. Great back to pass. Get a short one out to the left side to Joey Ramos. Picks up a couple of blocks to the 30 yard, to the 35 yard line and dives toward the 30. And it's back on the 40. Yeah, put a penalty flag on the far side at the 40 yard line. Maybe a hold against Imperial. I'm thinking out there. Maybe he was, maybe that's how he got sprung for those extra 10 yards. I don't know. Referee's talking about it. Yeah, you took it. You took it to Penny Carter instead of the Ramsey. <laughs> oh, no flag. 
They picked it out flag. Okay, so they picked that one up. So the completion will stand. And the ball will get down to the 31-yard line. So a gain of 13 on that one. But a third down and about 10 coming up for Imperial. Oh, they're kind of huddled up. Oh, we had a final. Yeah, Paul Liberty first, over Calexico, 28-7. I think we see them huddled by Imperial. Yeah. So, yeah, final score, Paul Liberty 27, Calexico 0. So the Yellow Jackets get their first win in league play. Tonight against the Bulldogs, back to passes Reed. Under heavy pressure again, rolls out to his left, looks downfield. Oh, oh, he's short. And short, short throws it at the 20-yard yeah. line. It would have been a first down. So it's short, short to Ramos. And the Tigers with a fourth down and ten from the thirty one. Oh, punt team went back to the sideline. Uh-huh. Yeah, Ramos was smart. He went right to where he needed to get for the first the down. First down. Yeah. Yeah. He did under school. He was under pressure, but I think enough pressure could have stopped and made that. But he's been hit so many times from behind tonight that I don't blame yeah. him to get rid of it fast. Fourth down and ten from the thirty one for the Tigers. Now yeah, one, two and throw. Stopped five in a row completions for Jordan Reed, who goes back to pass. Sets up in the pocket. Has to roll out to his left again. Cool. Looks the field. He's going to go ahead and try to run it to get the 10 yards. He's not going to make it. He'll get stopped at the 23-yard line, which will give him about eight yards, but enough for the first down, and it will turn the ball over on down. Oh, you watch that. He came, came up limping, but he looks like he's okay blocking it off. So Central stops the Tigers and has the ball first and ten with eight fifty four to go in the ball game in a thirty eight to seven lead. First and ten is put at the twenty four yard line. No change for the Tiger defense. Everybody's still the same. Tenero soon has stayed in a quarterback for Central. As a man in motion in Marcus Moore will hand it off up the middle. Morales, Morales will get hit after a gain of a couple. It's a stiff wall there by the Tigers. Yeah, good job. It's actually going to be Gomez on the carry. So Gomez will have the carry and will get to about the 28-yard line to give the gain of four, second down and six. And that drive by James Bonsa to come up and make that tackle. As soon as staying in the shotgun, goes back to pass. Sets up, goes out in the flat. Got to complete it to Morales. Oh, it's the on lane. Bounces off a tackler, still on his feet to the 35. Finally going to be driven out of bounds at the 38-yard line, and that will be good enough for a first down for Central. Good job of the extra effort. Oh, he got hit. Brandon hit him. Or Joey Ross hit him. Kept his balance. Turn him in, and he finally got pushed out by Brandon again. Ten yards on that. To the 38 yard line, first and 10 central from Rome 38. Moving the sticks. Once again, Gomez, the lone running back, man in motion is Morales to the near side. And turns around and goes back the other way. Hand it off, but then bounces to the outside of the 40 yard line. It is hard and brought out of bounds by Billy Ramos at the 45. But Gomez will get the gain out to the 45 yard line. A gain of seven, second down to three. I don't know what that was all about. Not yelling on the central side. We're from the stands, that is. Nathan Santana in the lineup. Chris is defensive in position. Good hit by Ramos. Yeah, no, I, I didn't see anything wrong with it. hard hit, yeah. I don't know if somebody was just said something on the sideline or what. Yeah. Central will stack up at the left side of the line. Hand it off. Hand it off. A couple of defenders and Gomez will get in to Tiger territory. Will be brought down to the 48-yard line after a seven-yard gain and another first down. Yeah, the local stopped him, but not until after he first down. So Medina with 87 yards rushing on 12 carries. Angel Nava Esparza, four carries and 79 yards. Now Carlos Gomez, seven carries and 27 yards. 
Tiger yeah. and I have 42. Wow. Yeah. That hurts. That hasn't happened in years, though. And off, and hand off to Gomez, and Gomez puts his shoulder down and drives through to the 40 yard line. Can make a check on that. Might be 21, not 22 in there. No, it is Gomez in there. We'll get to the 40 yard line. Big gain of eight, second down to two. He ran right over Villalobos. Did Villalobos held on? Sure did, though. How big is Powerful you? run. 5'10 and 2'10. Okay. Junior running back. Barnes take their time coming up to the line. Osuna will stay in a shotgun. And it off Gomez on the inside. We get stripped up behind the line of scrimmage. Penalty flag, a legal procedure by the Spartans. So we'll move that with five yards back, make it a second down and seven back at the 50 yard line. I didn't see that one. Once again, we'll be home next Friday night. The Johnny Romero Fireman's Helmet game between the Tigers and the Southwest Eagle. We'll finish out the regular season two weeks from tonight, also at home, against the Palo Verde Yellow Jackets. So if you're not able to make it to the games, make sure you tune it in to KXORadio.com. We're listening to all the action tonight on the airways as well at KXO Radio El Centro, California, as the Sparger stopped on this one right at the line of scrimmage. It'll be a third down and about eight. Stop by Ethan Ramos. I got him with 16 tackles for the night. There we go. Their parts are bringing in all the reserves now. No gain on that one. Right, Mark's getting a break. Gomez stays in at the running back position, but three wide receivers to the right side and Morales more. And Sullivan, back to passes Osuna, looks over the middle, passes incomplete, broken up, looked like it was broken up by the Tigers' Stephen Shaw. And I missed it. You missed it. <laughs> Here's a quick one that was over the middle. Stephen looked like he got a hand on it, bounced it away. And it'll be a fourth down at eight from the 45. They're saving up the punt. Who's going back? Deep to receive will be Ryan Bonillas on the far side and Joey Ramos on the near side. Which they flip-flopped from what they've been doing because they've been kicking away from yeah. Joey. So let's see if they oh, can. I would do. I, I would do. Uh, and on the punt, Jose Berlin Torres. He'll take his time. No rush at all on the punts. None. I like the way he angled that to the corner. Ramos will pick it up. for will pick it up. Towards the 20 for the 30-yard line after the 40. And it is going to be hit hard by the punter, who is a big guy. And he brings it down, muscles it down at the 40-yard oh, line. Penalty flags go down, and they're looking toward Imperial players. I don't like seeing that at all. Jose Berlin Torres, 5'11 and 210, and I believe he's a little bit bigger than that. But he stood up, Joey Ramos, and there was some words exchanged, and I'm just afraid. But instead of getting the ball out of the 49-yard line, or the 40-yard line, this is going to go against Imperial, but we'll see. No, no, it was him. It was personal foul against Osteen. Oh, they call that against yeah. him? Okay. I think when they were down, something was going okay. on. Okay. I thought they just celebrating, too much celebrating. Good from tackle by the punter, though, I'll tell you what. Yeah. Man, he stood in straight up. 5.47 to go in the ball game. Imperial will have the ball after the penalty oh, yeah. in central territory. And they'll put it at the 46 yard line of the Spartans. Very good central team, though. No question about it. They're going to be well, tough. Well, coach. Yep. Very well coached. And, and I like the way they came out in the second half and they changed up the offense. Oh, yeah. And it just totally threw a girl off. First and 10 Tigers at the central 46. Reed stays in a quarterback. Hands it off to Padilla up the middle. Padilla. Get hard at the 45 yard line. His them. extra effort though will get him down to, they're marking at the 43, but he ended up at the 41, so I'm thinking it should be near the 41. But no, they're bringing it back to the 43. Wow. Ooh. He was on the ground, he was at the 41, but 
It's going to be a gain of three, second down at seven from the 43. Must have been a whistle. We didn't hear it. Yeah, that could have been. They could have. Because it was. They did, they did stand him up and so. Second down and seven from the 43. And off the D again up the middle. The D will put his head down. And he'll get down to about the 41-yard line this time. But it'll be a third down and five coming up. Good job by the front line for the Spartans. Number 78, Michael Solorio, senior. 42 yards on, 14 carries for Jesus Padiz. And we're for the backfield by Brendan Adams. Third down and five. Tigers at the central 41. And in motion, the near side is Ramos. Gets the pitch forward on the pass, and he has nowhere to go. Didn't get any blocking on the side. It'll be a loss back to the 45-yard line, a loss of four yards of the play, and a fourth down and nine coming up. Got 42, Christian Moore. He had that red. Turn him in. Yeah, just blew that one up completely. Yeah. Good containment. So the Tigers will have to punt. Ramos will be back at his 40-yard line and deep to receive. Will be Juan Dominguez. And he will be inside his 15 for this one. I think they're short. One, two, three, four, five, six. Nope, okay. Good snap back to Ramos. Oh. Low liner is going to hit the ground and just about stop on the ground. Then starts to roll a little bit. We'll roll inside the 15 and about the 11 yard line. And that's where Central will get the ball first and 10. And they'll be at their own 11 yard line with 3.31 to go in the ball game. You should just about run it out from here. About the way they've been going. Yeah. It's just, it's just chugging out. Yeah. yeah. The big, we're going in the 76, Luna. Doesn't give us any stats on it. So Central Island Ball first and then throw an 11 yard line with 3.31 to go and leading. By a score of 38 to 7 over Imperial. The new QPN. Eric Garcia. Oh, Eric. Little Eric. My shortstop. Eric Garcia will be in there in the pistol formation. As a center will go to the sideline, lay a hand off to the left side, and picking up a couple of blocks, diving out across the 20. Block in the back. Elias Dominguez out across the 15 or across the 10, I should say, ready to get him back to the line of scrimmage. And yeah, Joel Sanchez blocked uh, Villalobos right into the runner. And as you said, a flag down, it will go against Central. Yeah. Oh, there you Put it back to the six yard line. So, running clock. Um, for a running clock. Is this running clock? No, no, I'm sorry. No. Just start the yeah. clock, not yeah. running clock. Run the clock. Yeah. Was first and 15 now at the six yard line for Central. Garcia, quarterback. As then he gets to his right side, going from the shotgun now. Long snap count. Man goes in motion. Hand it out to Dominguez. Dominguez sees a little bit of a hole and will get some yardage at to about the nine yard line. Eight of three, second down and 12 coming up. James Ponce with the sixth tackle of the Knights of the Tigers, along with Luis Amarias. So second and 12 from the nine for Central. Very smart. What they're doing here, 2.13 left. And he waits for the, oh, he's already a five-second call over here. It'll be delayed again pretty soon. And about the same play over left tackle. That's adding a little bit of room to run this time. There's a 360 and out to the 15 yard line is Dominguez. Good hard run that time out to the 15. Be a gain of about, uh, about six yards on the play. Third down and six coming up. Oh my dear, Baldy got him with the fourth tackle of the night. Third and six from the 15 for Central. 
We get three wide receivers to the right side, but I would suspect they're going to run Dominguez again. And in motion is Morales. And about Dominguez again around the left side. Dominguez breaks a couple of tackles by the line of scrimmage, and there will be stopped short of the 20-yard line. So Central will need a punt. Big game to the 19, so it came to about four. So fourth down and about three. Make it a game of three on it again. So three carries of three. Six and three. Under a minute. A big victory for the Central Spartans. That puts them in the Catbird seat to face the Brawley Wildcats at the Bell Game. That's, the that's, it. that's going to be for all the marbles yeah. there. Or at least for the tie. And timeout will be called by the Spartans with 36 seconds remaining in the ball game and leading at 38-7. to 7. Day in and day out, your publicly owned Imperial Irrigation District proudly delivers low-cost, reliable energy service to its customers in the Imperial and Coachella Valley. When compared to other power providers, IID's residential, commercial, and governmental customers all save up to 50% on their monthly energy bills. That's because IID is committed to more than just delivering power. IID is committed to you. IID, where customers always come first. And as we come back to the stadium here, Spartans, I'm sure they call timeout to get some different players in there, to get some time on homecoming to be able to get into it. And our lined up for it. Joey Ramos on the near side, Ryan Wood gets on the far side, deep to receive. And the snap. The kick, he angled out of bounds. He had a ground near the midfield line. Of where it should angle out. The 49 yard line is central, so pretty close on it. And how much time left? 30 seconds. 30 seconds to go. Imperial with the ball first and 10 at the central 49 yard line. Spartans are bringing in all new players to playing time tonight. Yeah, I think that's good. Homecoming night, you want to see everybody get in as yeah. if they can. And I'm going to go up the middle. The Tigers will get a little bit of yardage. Bustling his way down is Jesus Padilla. And he'll get down to the 42-yard line. And again, it's seven. Tough, like tough yard for Padilla today. Yeah. They're lining up. And that's it. That'll be it. Final score will be the Central Spartans 38, the Imperial Tigers 7. That'll put Central now at 6-2 and two on the season. The Tigers will drop to 3-5. and five. Tigers will be home next week against Southwest. And Central will be facing Palo Verde next week. And we'll be back to recap the scoring of tonight's homecoming win for the Central Spartans and look at the stats of this ball game as our post-game show continues here in just a moment. Time the day off right by having breakfast at Broken Yolk Cafe. Once again, voted best breakfast in the Imperial Valley by our customers. Thank you. Remember, Broken Yolk strives every day to bring you great service and great food. Still preparing everything fresh daily. Open for breakfast and lunch seven days a week from 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. Log on to Broken Yolk Cafe and join the club or order your meal online. Broken Yolk Cafe on North Imperial Avenue in El Centro. I don't worry anymore about getting stranded with my car breaking down. Why is that? That automotive class I took at Imperial Valley College not only prepared me to fix my own car, it also prepared me for a new career in automotive repair. I like the way you think. I've always wanted to become a welder. Then check out these and other IDC career education classes at imperial.edu. 
For over 60 years, the Imperial Quarterback Club has helped different clubs and sports teams at Imperial High School. The money they raise goes a long way, keeping your kids busy with school activities. Their members are parents and community people who care and want to donate their time. If you would like to become a member, please contact Betty or Larry at 760-355-1312. That's 355-1312. The Quarterback Club wishes the Imperial Tigers a great season. Go Tigers! Aiden Express in Imperial is your one-stop convenience store with full-service car wash, gas, and diesel. It's the place for all your snacks, cold drinks, and ice cold beer. And if you're throwing a party, keg, wine, and champagne. Everything you need at one convenient location. While you're there, get your vehicle washed and save with us with eight gallons of gas or diesel and get the chance car wash free. Yes, Aiden Express is your one-stop convenience store at the corner of Highway 86 and Aiden Road in Imperial. Halftime score was 24 to 7 in favor of Central. And the Tigers at one point had a 73, 7 to 3 lead. And Central came back with a couple of touchdowns before the half, with three touchdowns before the half to take a 24 7 lead at the half. And then in the third quarter, 7.57 to go in the third quarter, a 10 play 84 yard drive using four minutes and three seconds off the clock. It was capped by a 10 yard touchdown pass from Danero Osuna to Michael Sullivan. And the extra point was good by Sebastian Coronel, and it was a 31-7 to central lead, and then with 5-10 to go in the fourth quarter. Final score of the night, a 14-yard pass from Danero Osuna, and this time to Fernando Morales on a six-play 51-yard drive using two minutes and six seconds off the clock, and after Coronel's extra point, it was 38-7 to central, and that's how this ball game would end up. Osuna would complete 19 of 25 passes for 199 yards. Five of those for 84 yards and a touchdown to Marcus Moore. And then six for 30 yards to Michael Sullivan. Uh, see, I had said Sullivan had the touchdown a long ago. No, it was not. It was Brian Martin who had the touchdown in the third quarter, so my apology on that. The 21 and 12 make the Brian Martin scored that first touchdown of the second half. And Martin with the uh, have that one reception for the TD and that came in the second half. There was also Fernando Morales who did have a touchdown and also caught a total of five passes for 67 yards. There was one pass that was caught for a yard by Jonathan Medina, one for seven yards to Skyler Cook and one for 10 yards I mentioned before to Ryan Martin. So 19 of 25 for 199 yards. And then rushing, Jonathan Medina led all carriers, 12 carries for 87 yards. Angel Nava as far as that, had 66-yard touchdown run in the first half on his first carry, but ended up with 79 on four carries. Carlos Gomez, nine carries for 35 yards. Antonero Suna was sacked a couple of times, then got enough pop yardage. He would have zero yards at, in five carries. One interception, that was the only really black eye on those two. Well, the one yeah. Interception that went for a touchdown by Ethan Ramos, but other than that, he was very efficient at quarterback. For Imperial Jordan Reed, would go the distance. He would complete 12 of 25 in the first half, and then would get six more completions in the second half. So it would end up with 18 and 35 attempts. And we'll have to add up the yardage on this. Uh, let's see, 18 would be. 147, 171, back to 168, 167, and then 13, 180, minus the 176 is what it looks like for, for Reed. Big ones were by Joey Ramos. Joey would have four completions or four receptions for 49 yards in the first half, and then he would have four more in the second half that would add up to 43 yards in the second half as well. For Joey Ramos, that was really the big place in the second half. About 80 yards. Yeah, a couple of receptions by Jacob Gray, one for eight yards, one for minus four. But that's been about it for the second half for the Tigers. Jesus Bazia, 15 carries, 49 yards. And Brennan Adams had five carries for a yard. Jordan Reed, five carries for a net of five. And that pretty well does it 
four turnovers by the Tigers. I believe with all those in the first half. Yes. All four yes. were in the first half, weren't they? Two interceptions and two fumbles in the half. And so uh, we'll get a little quick word with Brady Hoff, our offensive coordinator for the Tigers. And so <laughs> a lot of noise from up top, but we'll have him come in here for just a moment. Oh. It's a tough one to take like this. Yeah, it wasn't wasn't very pretty. We just they outplayed us in every absolutely every facet of the game. So I thought, thought we had a good game plan offensively, but we didn't have them ready to play, and they they took it to us after that, about that first quarter. We just couldn't move anything up front. We couldn't really run the ball, and then we threw the ball, and we had a couple of drops and some wrong routes and a, a bad read and a pick and turnovers killed us. Those two fumbles and that intercept. I just, I feel the fate and just took the wind out of our sails. You can't, you can't turn it over to these guys three times in the first oh, no. half. No, in the first half, no, and especially under the first snap from in the ball game and yeah. you fumble the ball away and had the defense did hold and kept it to a field goal, but then we got down inside their red zone and then we get a penalty. I think it was a holding call to move back or an illegal procedure, I guess is what it was back and you just can't have those when you try to get a drive going like that. No, then we got down in there again and I think we had a, a three play series where we had a receiver ran the wrong route, and then the second time he dropped the pass, and then he caught one in his fourth and fourth and short, and we ran an RPO, and our, our guy was supposed to run the RPO on the backside, ran right into the safety, and the linebacker that we reached, he, he keyed so he should have pulled the throw up, but we had to give it, and they, they stuffed us on fourth down. And, you know, of course, we were able to score a defense touchdown, but it just, just out of sync the whole night for the, the quarterback was off, Sometimes the receivers were off or dropping it, and then second half the line just was off. We had to kind of make a switch here, and the injuries piled up a little bit. You know, we missed Kyle a lot. Yeah. He got hurt that first play of Brawley, and then a couple other guys a little banged up that didn't practice much this week. And you know, I'm saying injuries are injuries. Bar none, they just outplayed us. They're a better team than us. Yeah, well, that's what I was going to point out is that there were mistakes that were made by the Imperial team, but you got to tip your cap to Central. They came with a good game plan. They stuck with it and played an outstanding game. So, yeah. We'll watch the film here, see what we did wrong, where we can improve and practice. There's a lot of things we got to work on with the offensive line and a lot of things we got to work on our receivers. And we'll, we got a week to get ready for Southwest and hopefully hopefully we get two wins here the last two weeks and hopefully Kearney, Kearney takes a loss from there and we're able to sneak into the playoffs and, and get a shot. So. How many teams will go definitely to the playoffs? Twelve. Twelve go. Okay, so and I think right. right now we're sitting on the bubble and, and the the teams below us aren't, they're like one in six or two and right. two and five and Kearney, Kearney is the one that's a little bit, they're, they're right there with us. And they, I know they have Hoover and they have they have another game that they should win, and then the, that last game is like a game that might be a little bit tough for them. So, but they should, they should be winning two of their next three, maybe three of their next three. So we gotta we gotta take care of our end, and then hopefully the the computer that does it all spits us out for a, a twelve seed. So, well, and, and with the way that the power rankings go, uh, you never want to have a loss. But if you have a loss against a team like this, who went so far last year in the playoffs and is above you in this. It shouldn't hurt you from dropping much down from that bubble. Well, that's, well. That's, that's the one fortunate thing. All of our losses, I mean, the only bad loss we took was the bull. I think they're three and, and five or something like that. But Gila Ridge is undefeated. I, I, as of as of yesterday, I don't right, know. Right. Gila Ridge is undefeated. Brawley has what two losses. Central right. has two losses. Uh, Valley Center, I think, has two losses. So, I mean, we've lost to some good football teams at least. So, right. it's something to say. You got a week to to regroup and. Uh, well, that's Southwest next week, so appreciate you stopping by. Well, that's a tough thing to do. We that's, appreciate you doing that. That's a, that's a big game for us. That's a fireman's moment game. So right. we, we got it last year, and hopefully we keep it here. So. Yep, we'll right. have it at home. So thanks a lot again, Brady. Appreciate it. Brady Hoff, our offensive coordinator for the Imperial Tigers, and we appreciate him stopping by and talking with us. That'll about do it from uh, here at Central High School. Uh, we'll get you, if you got a few stats there, you want to... How many push? yards did George end up with? Uh, I think... I had him as um, uh, 18 to 35 for 176 is what I had him at. Yeah. Not bad, not bad. Yeah, no, on the defensive side, Ethan Ramos, of course, always saving the tackles. I had him with 16. Wow. So, Tigers. Wow. 
Then I have Ant Nathan Villalobos and Ken Sponsor each with six. Let me check my second sheet here. Yeah, I think everybody's here. Omar Garibaldi, Tanner Travis, and Brandon Silva with four. Also Sergio Solano coming back from that knee injury. Hasn't played all year until last week. He had four, but he was all over the field. I liked the, the way he was running with everybody. They don't have the shape, I think. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned Andrew Luna. He also had five. But Jason Ramos said pick six. Yep, that was the low so score, score for the Tigers again. tonight. Yeah. It was the pick six by Ethan Ramos. And uh, that's all the Tigers could muster yeah. offensively tonight. So the and score. Sir, we had Sergio also with that force fumble and recovery. Right, and recovery, yeah. That was a great play by that. Right here in front of us. Yep, right here in front of us. That's when he had a good game. Tigers have the last two. Regular season games at home, Southwest next Friday night, Palo Verde the following week at home, and then uh, we'll just have to see how the computer rankings, whether we go to the playoffs or not. For the Central Spartans, they will be at Palo Verde next week, and then the big bell game on November 1st, and I can see that coming down to the championship on that night, the Raleigh Wildcats and the Central Spartans for the Agrivala League Championship. That would be an impressive one if it goes to there. Yeah. That would be neat to be able to watch that, well, they got all of our sponsors for being with us. Imperial yes. Quarterback Club, uh, Brick House Coffee, Hayton Express, Sturmus Floor Covering, El Zarafi Restaurant, Imperial Tiger Football Association, Broken Yoke Cafe, Imperial Valley College, R&K Air Conditioning, and the Imperial Irrigation District. We appreciate everybody tuning in tonight as we go on the simulcast on KXO Radio of Central California and on the World Wide Web at KXORadio.com. And our final score here is the Central Spartans 38, the Imperial Tigers 7, and signing off for George Garabo and Mickey Dale, returning to the main studios of KXO Radio. Good night. The Imperial Valley's best oldies on the radio. It's what I listen to.